meeting to order. We have uh, first item of business this morning. We have a public hearing. So I'd uh, like to uh, op officially open that public hearing and uh, ask for the Director of Corporate Administration to read aloud the notice. Good morning. This public hearing is being held to hear from anyone who may be affected by the proposed changes to the city's zoning bylaw. Zoning amendment bylaw number 4242 proposes to allow backyard handkeeping in RS1 and RS2 zones and to allow backyard beekeeping in RS1 zones only and there were no comments received in response to the notice. Thank you. So uh, no correspondence or delegations? No. So for the first time, I'll call for uh, any comments. Councillor Rogers? I just wanted to comment. Um, the, the, I, I think this was all happening before I got on council. Um, but the, uh, I've talked to people about the bees and the chickens, and they said, well, if people want chickens, why don't they live in the country, I guess. Um, and I'm just wondering, by allowing chickens in the uh, city limits at, at, at what point um, will this end because somebody might say okay well I want goats uh, and then I want pigs um, with with the chickens um, I, I, I from the opinion that I got from a lot of people was they just said dogs and cats are fine um, I don't think that this is, the, the city animal control officer has to start looking after bees and hens as well and where does it end up? That was some of the comments that I had. Thank you. For a second, uh, any f comments or questions? And for a third time, were there any comments or questions? Thank you. So uh, that will uh, bring to close the uh, public hearing. Uh, thank you. So this time I'd like to call to uh, order a regular meeting of council on Monday, March 16th. Uh, item two on our agenda is uh, new councillor business, 2.1, councillor McFadden. Morning, your worship. Uh, thank you. Attended recently the uh, AGM for the uh, local SPCA. They had actually a very nice turnout and they have now have a new executive. A couple of things that came up at that meeting, the question was raised of whether or not the council would have any objection to the SPCA I guess partnering with us at the trade show whereby some of their volunteers would come along with some brochures and information and I don't know if he can sell memberships there but they could certainly get some volunteers and some information out for them uh, I don't know if council has any objection or if you need a motion to that effect but uh, we'll deal with it in a moment I guess also Occasionally, from time to time, the SPCA will apparently have a, a hot dog sale at uh, Walmart or perhaps Safeway. And the question was raised, could they hold the odd hot dog sale at the NAR Park? And my understanding is from staff, they're uh, not a commercial organization, so they would need to just uh, drop a letter to staff to get the date set for permission. That's my understanding. So. Uh, did you want a motion regarding the trade show or does anybody have any questions or does anybody have any issues with that? So let's just, if I can, we'll just throw up to administration on the trade show. Is there Thank any you. aspect to that? That's to you, Brenda, because I don't know where we're at on the trade show. So. Uh, through your worship, at the moment we are um, currently uh, gathering ideas for the trade show, so I don't see a problem with that. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And uh, we'll bring it back when and uh, on the issue of uh, the, uh, use the, the use of the NAR Park, because I think that would have to probably go through to the, um, does that go through to us, the city, or does that go through to the uh, society? Uh, through your worship, it would not normally come through us as long as it is uh, one of these fundraiser uh, type of events. Um, it's a public uh, spot and the right of public assembly is there and this is a fairly frequent um, situation but of course it's always coordinated with the folks on site make sure it's not interfering with something else sure thank you so we'll bring that forward when then through go ahead councillor uh, sorry councillor oh, Wilbur your worship. I'm just saying, Mr. McFadden, um, was that a motion that he had on the floor that we include them in our trade show regardless of what we do at the in our booth 
I don't think he's made it as a motion yet, Councillor Wilbury, just uh, throwing it out as uh, we had, we're uh, sending out that net to Council in terms of some ideas of what we would use the uh, booth for. <coughs> Yeah, no, I had replied to that email, so I was just going to um, second it if it was a motion. I, I support Councillor McFadden in that. Thank you. So we'll bring it uh, through as we uh, put the booth together and uh, as another suggestion. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item 2.2, 2, Councillor McFadden, in regards to the library. don't have a big report. I tried to contact some folks over the weekend. turned out the same people that they're in the library, a lot of them are also with Rotarians, so they were all tied up at the uh, auction. But I can tell you that all the flooring and baseboard is down, and some of the shelves have been reorganized or reconstituted from the ones that were there, and the new ones are expected at any moment from the states. That's all, sir. Great, thank you. And the library is now open again? And yes, it is. They're open on a limited basis. Thank you. Any other councillor business? Uh, yes, I have some. So I attended the board meeting for NCLGA and we finalized all the resolutions that will come forward to our members in Prince George in May. And I'm happy to announce that our bid for the 2016 AGM was accepted and they say that that was the nicest bid package they have ever seen. So um, thank you, Brenda. and for your help with that and uh, Cheryl Schumann, thank you very much for, for helping and I'm excited for us to move forward and be the host in 2016. Thank you and that um, bid was a joint uh, also with the uh, other communities yes. in the South Peace? Yes, so we will be co-hosting with uh, the City of Chetwind, Pooscoopy and Tumblr Ridge. Great job, thank you. Uh, anything further? Um, can I just want to add uh, <coughs> Congratulations, Dawson Creek, on the Craft Hockey Bill, and uh, thank you to all of the volunteers that put in all their time and uh, to, to get to become a finalist and be successful in, in their efforts. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, item three, minutes, 3.1. Uh, we have the minutes of our regular meeting of Council of March 2nd, 2015, for adoption. Councillor McFadden, Councillor Parslow, were there any errors or omissions in the minutes? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, any business arising out of those minutes? Item 5 is correspondence, 5.1. We have an email uh, from Don Pettit, President of the Citizens Advisory uh, for Environmental Research. Uh, Councillor Parslow? I move that we respond to his request for reasoning and uh, thank him for his letter. Thank you. So, administration to prepare a response? He requests a response, so I th okay. appreciate Thank you. him sending this letter. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Javekov? Yeah. Thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 5-2, we have a letter from Christina Vanderwall, uh, Kiwanis Club of Dawson Creek, uh, regarding a special occasion permit for the trade fair. Councillor Schumann? Um, I move that we support their request. Thank you. Seconded? I'll second that. Councillor Wilbur, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 5-3, we have a letter from the uh, Dawson Creek Curling Club uh, with a request to pay the utilities on the um, curling rink. Councillor Javetka. I'll move that we support the request. Thank you. Second it. I'll second it. Councillor Parslow, discussion? Councillor McFadden. I'm just having a problem bringing it up, but I noticed in their, uh, I think it was the financial report on page two, they showed $155,000 in wages and benefits. And I'm wondering what that would be. Does it cost that much for an ice maker? Or I was just a little curious about that, that's all, Bef before I agree to pay any bills for them. Thank you. I don't know if. Uh, Councillor Javeka? <coughs> I can uh, help a little bit with that. Was somebody else ahead of me here? No, go ahead. No. Um, they have included all of their staff. They've got people that work in the kitchen upstairs. They've got people that work in the bar. And mm. uh, they have a janitor part-time. And the ice maker and a manager. So the uh, all of those things 
add up to a fair wage, but there's quite a bit of revenue that uh, you know, goes against that. Thank you. Thank you. No, Con Councillor Parswell? Yeah, I um, seconded it, but uh, I'm not uh, comfortable at this time. Uh, I felt we should have a discussion. Um, I, I would like us to discuss this matter um, as one of the first topics we cover in our policy review. And I'd like to discuss this in context of all other recreational facilities. Um, I'm, I've come to the position that I, I will be, uh, I'm inclined to support a re uh, change in our policy, which would include the utilities being paid for all uh, city-owned recreational facilities. Um, I don't want uh, to, there to be a cash transfer to the curling club for this amount. I, I would like to see this handled through direct billing, but that's up to discussions with the administration. Um, so I'm just wondering uh, procedurally here through you to staff if we can, even though I seconded it, can it be deferred until we discuss the whole issue of um, uh, under a policy when we when we have a, a policy discussion on this topic. Thank you. So that's a question to Jim. Um, again, I'm going to turn that over to Brenda. I don't exactly know when the <coughs> fees and charges for recreational facilities policy is scheduled. Yeah. Right. Yeah, through your worship, um, we could move any policy forward to any of the meetings, so that could be included in the first policy meeting. If that is council's wish. Okay, thank you. So, so we have a motion on the table. Um, I, I would just would like to make a motion after we've dealt with this one to that effect that be on the very first topic. Okay, thank you, Councillor Javekov and Councillor Rogers. Yeah, I guess my concern is that uh, you know we've got a curling club that's quite anxious about their future, um, considering the issues with the chiller and. Um, you know, looking at their report, their submission there, they have paid an excessive amount for capital works on their building. Like I think in excess of 400,000 over the last 15 or 20 years. So, you know, they've made a, you know, a significant contribution to keeping that facility uh, in, in good repair. So, I guess, to me, um, you know, if we could show some goodwill there, and uh, it would just help to sort of revitalize the the board. They are quite, uh, you know, I've, I've met with them a couple times now, and they're quite uh, <coughs> discouraged, I guess you could say, with the uh, with the situation. So, you know, I, I would like to see us support this. Uh, um, motion to, I guess, just to demonstrate support for the for the group. You know, they have been active and they've, uh, you know, made a significant contribution to the community as far as amenities go. But uh, more importantly, I think they've put a lot of time and effort and um, money and in kind support into the building itself. So um, I guess that's why I'd like to see us support it today. I mean, the, the issue of uh, policy, I think, is important. I, I would like to see some discussion there about consistency as well. But uh, this is kind of over and above that. Thank you. Councilor Rogers? Yes, Your Worship. Um, did we? not receive this application for the city to um, take over the payments previously? Yes, it was dealt with about, um, I'm going to say last fall sometime. sometime. And what was the answer then? It was rejected by the council of the day. It was at that rejected point. by the yeah. council then. Okay. Um, this, it's all based on the assumption. We don't get the report back whether or not we're going to actually fix that chiller. I'd like to remind council of that. We have not received the report. Um, that we are going to fix the chiller and the condenser and the piping that goes over to that building yet. We won't find out about that until I believe the end of April. 
Um, and I, I just wonder, and you know, are, are we sending a message out that yes, council is definitely going to be fixing that building, or are we going to be waiting for the report on that first before we decide that? See, I think in, I was at a meeting with um, Councillor Javekov with the Curling Club as well when they expressed some concerns about the um, state of the repairs and operating costs and in terms of the utilities that they were struggling trying to manage the facility as well as meet the needs or meet the demands of those utilities, and so to me. Council had made the gave direction to administration to put that up to a hundred thousand dollars into repairing that chiller uh, if we could, and so from my perspective, I, I think it's absolutely critical for us to answer the question to the curling club if we're going to assist and pay for the utilities for them because if we're not, then why would we put a hundred grand into temporarily repairing that chiller to get it functional? So I think to me that's the kind of the perspective that I took on it was if council isn't prepared to pay the utilities now and they can't make that uh, end of meeting that uh, utility bill, then we got to stop administration from going forward with the uh, temporary repairs to that chiller because why would we put a hundred grand into it if the curling club can't operate it. And then we have to make a decision. So I think it's appropriate kind of today to, to answer that on behalf of the club. Councillor Parslow, then Councillor Schumann. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm empathic to everything you've said there and to what uh, Councillor Javakov has said. To me, though, I like to look at things in, in a systems way. And that's why I, I, I wanted to consider this matter when we review policy. And we've got the information uh, from, uh, as Councillor Rogers just uh, referred to. I don't see, I don't see why we uh, can't wait another month or, or so before we deal with this. But uh, yeah, I'm declaring my empathy to the position they're in, and uh, it's just a matter of timing of dealing with this letter. I think so. My, my difficulty. Yeah. yeah, and I guess, like I said, just to me, it's the we, we've we've got administration uh, moving forward with doing some repairs to that chiller, and so if the curling club can't operate the facility, they can't pay the utilities. We got to stop administration and say, wait a minute, we'll, we'll hold it. Why would we do hundred grand or whatever into capital if the curling club can't operate the facility? So then we have to answer that question. I think that's how, and that's. But they're, they're under the they're under the goal to fix that chiller temporarily if, as a first step, right? So anyway, that Councillor Schum. Um, yeah. So the decision that we made in the fall, I think this is a whole new conversation now, given the fact that they've basically been out of business all year. Um, I am also sympathetic to um, the, uh, the the need for um, some help with this, and uh, I think I will vote in favor of it. Thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Javeka. Uh, just clarification on the on the previous request. My understanding it wasn't rejected; it was deferred in uh, to get a more of a report, which has been submitted now. And you know, again, I, I think the report demonstrates that they have um, been successful in their in their operations for a lot of years. And I would just like to see them, I would like to see us demonstrate support for, for their uh, activities just to revitalize the club. I mean, these nonprofit boards, they're volunteers and, uh, you know, I've seen it before where they, they'll work away and work away and then they'll get into a position where it just seems like uh, it's futile to carry on. So... <clears throat> somehow you, you have to get some life back into that board and um, gives them give them some assurance that yeah they are important and city does support them and uh, you know give them sort of the I guess the impetus to, to carry on so thank you Councilor Rogers just to be clear on, uh, is is this just a one-shot deal for the um, utilities, or is this going to be something that's going to be part of our policy that we will carry on doing? Well, so I c if I can answer that, I think they're asking for us to uh, now start to reimburse for the utilities. But so for, to me, it's we're going to address it for now for this year, and then address it through the policy in terms of giving that direction, Jim. 
Uh, so I don't have clarity on whether I'm cutting a check if this motion passes or whether I'm paying uh, monies to the utility companies, yeah. including ourselves. Yeah. Sure. Councillor Parzo? Well, I would like to comment. I don't believe in cutting a check for sure. Um, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm, I would rather deal with this thing under policy and that we'll get a, a consistent approach to all things to do with recreation in this regard. And again, you know, uh, I think we should wait for this report. Uh, but I'm, I'm, otherwise, I'm right on side with Councillor Jabatkov. Thank you. Councillor Rogers? Yeah, are they in arrears right now? Like, uh, is this an unpaid bill? I believe the situation is that they had indicated that um, May or May or June they will not have the financial capacity to pay the utilities for the facility. Yep. So, so can we just? Your Worship, so I just like to add that um, um, in this instance, I'm going to support um, Councillor Javakov motion and I think it's important that we have said we're we've set money aside for capital that has sent a message and I think this club um, didn't expect that chiller to go down and to me it's no different um, than I'm sure the volunteers that look after the grounds at the ex for the exhibition didn't expect the grandstands to need to be replaced so it we I think in this instance um, Right now, we need to help them look after their utilities, but I also agree with Councillor Parzo that we should be looking at this under policy um, across the board and decide what we're going to do with the facilities the city owns. But in this instance, um, I'm going to support Mr. Javakov. I think we need to uh, help this club out. Curling is one of our greatest Olympic sports, and um, I think we need to support not only our adults, but our, our youth moving forward until we make a final decision. Thank you. And I'm just going to clarify then uh, for the purposes of the motion for administration that uh, Councillor Javakov, that your motion was that we would support and pay the utilities on behalf of the club uh, for the 2015-16 season if we can. That will give us the opportunity then to review the policy yep. and that we will pay the utilities on behalf of the club so that that would be a billing to the city and we wouldn't be cutting a check to the curling club. Mm -hmm. Does that clarify it for you, Jim? If that's the will of the mover. Okay. Thank you. Councillor, or sorry, Shelley. Can I just get clarification on a start time? May or June? <laughs> well, I, I think it would start now. I okay. Mean, uh, March 1st? March 1st, sure. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, Councillor Rogers? I just heard that they were okay to pay their bill up until May or June. So why do we want to start sooner? Um, and then if it, if it is up till May or June, we could still look at it through our policy and make the decision in May or June. Uh, is there a need to rush into it? No. Councillor Rod Javeka? Uh Did you look at in detail at the report that they submitted there? Yeah. They, they uh, sold memberships last year to 200 and some members that didn't get to curl so they're sitting there with a decision to make do they reimburse those people and there's some discussion going on now about maybe getting uh you know allowing them a cheaper rate next year or they're they're in dire straits i mean they're financially strapped and uh with the cash that they've got on hand yeah they could probably pay their utilities but there are other costs that they're not going to meet uh, they've got staff that they haven't paid yet. Uh, their ice maker, which they had issued a contract for when the when they fired up last year. So it's not, uh, you know, they don't have any money. If you look at that report, it's uh, fairly detailed there that they're, you know, they need the support, and they need it now. Thank you. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Opposed. In favor. Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 5-4, we have a letter from Kathleen Spalick, Manager of Finance and Corporate Operations at the Union of BC Municipalities regarding the 2015 UBCM. Councillor uh, Schumann. Um, I move that we pay our membership dues for UBCM. Thank you. Seconded? I'll second that. Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? All in favour? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 
Uh, we're a little ahead for our delegation, so I'll move to reports. Um, Jim, do you want to do 7 1 um, now, and do we have time? Mm. Well, you won't run that much over if you want to do All right. 7 1. Let's do 7.1. We have a report 15 0242 from the Chief Administrative Officer regarding the Memorial Kin Arena and Curling Ring. Councillor uh, Parswell? Yes, I. I will so move if you read it out for me. I can't find it right now. Mine just came up. Okay. Oh, no, it didn't. It didn't. Mine's just taking a bit of time. I got it. I would move that the report number 15-042 from the Chief Administrative Officer regarding the Memorial Kin Arena's curling rink be received. Further, the Council approve a crowdsourcing event to access the collective wisdom of local subject experts employed in refrigeration related activities in the natural gas industry and further that this event be structured as a fundraising opportunity. Thank you. Second to Councillor um, Rogers. Discussion. Councillor Javekov. Um, I agree with the concept. I, I don't remember the details of the report there. Uh, we're not going to charge these people money to participate in a discussion, or are we? Jim? So through your worship, this suggestion actually came from a couple of the folks in the business. They're suggesting that uh, if Mayor Bumstead uses his contacts in Calgary and Councillor Javakov uses his contacts locally, that their employers might well be willing to contribute a fundraising amount, a registration fee for them to be there. Um, but that's not the essential part of the, it's their um, expertise that we're seeking to access. Um, if the fundraising aspect is a barrier to anyone being there, you wouldn't want it to uh, uh, diminish the attendance, but several of them said they felt their employers would be willing to pay a $100 registration fee for them to be there, and we would provide them with $25 worth of a meal, and the $75 difference could go towards the project. And the, um, so and I have had some conversations with a number of the industry uh, reps uh, that are doing in the area. All of them, without exception, thought it was a great idea uh, for us to be able to engage that. Um, some of the technical expertise that exists within the industry, the um, mechanical uh, maintenance um, gurus, if I can call them that, at each of the companies, Murphy and Canna, Art, Shell, uh, have all got their on higher high level maintenance uh, components when they have issues that go on with within their infrastructure and all thought it was a great idea for us to be able to try to leverage that and bring some of those guys in and gals into the uh, uh, facility let them have a look at it give their suggestions on how and what they might be able to do to uh, come with suggestions on repairs for equipment and maintenance or whatever and so they all thought it was a really cool idea in terms of uh, trying to leverage that expertise that uh, we don't have within the organization. So. Councillor Rogers, then Councillor Javeka. Yeah, I totally agree that, um, and I've heard it lots of times, you know, we've got all this expertise in town, why are we going out to, I've heard Mr. Javekov say, why are we going out and, and utilizing um, um, What's that word? Consultants. Consultants. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we use utilizing consultants? About we're 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 asking local people and local businessmen, you know, to help us consult on this matter. And I think the more eyes we get on this thing, um, the better. And, and more opinions is is always a good thing. I agree. Thank you, Councillor Javeka. So I guess my only concern is that we're we're seen to be charging people to come and give us information I would sooner see something like uh, you know maybe a site visit to the memorial arena and maybe a meeting upstairs or something as a follow-up you know without you know a bunch of costs incurred um, you know everybody's busy and to tie them up for you know a couple hours might be excessive but uh, I know that there are people in town here that would gladly participate um, you know, if we just go and deal with the issue. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. And I, as I say, I got um, I, I after Jim had kind of 
broached it with me. I got two sons, third class and fourth, fourth class power engineers, and I never talked to them too much about the issues, right, in terms of it. But both of them, as soon as we t I started talking about it, they both said, well, Dad, you know, if you do this and you do this and you should talk to this guy, they absolutely, it's their familiarity with the equipment and what you can do and what you should be looking at was all right there. And so yeah. to me, I just think anything we can do to leverage that expertise that exists in a much bigger scale than anything we deal with with respect to the chillers or compressors and equipment in those rinks compared to what they're using out there could be very, very helpful for us, both in terms of understanding the issues as well as perhaps um, procurement, right? So. Jim? Uh, so if the fundraising uh, aspect is a barrier, council, the mover could, uh, with the permission of the seconder, just remove the last further, which is that this be structured as a fundraising opportunity. That could just be removed. Okay. Who I'm moved? I'm fine with it being a fundraiser. Okay. So. Okay. Who moved? Uh, moved and seconded? I am, well, you said you Show. moved it. I read it. Okay. Um, further conversation, further discussion. <coughs> Councillor Jebeckoff? Yeah. <laughs> and to be honest, uh, you know, I support the concept and uh, I'd be there in a minute to get people from town here, local people that are involved in the oil and gas industry to to come and give us advice, but I, I just don't feel comfortable charging them to do it. Like saying, you know, you give us a hundred bucks and you can come and tell us what you think. <laughs> like, it just doesn't seem right to me. Okay, Councillor Rogers. I agree with Councillor Javakov. Uh, these guys, they just want to get in, get out, and you know, just that's that's the attitude of, uh, and that's the way that these guys work. They see a job, they want to get in, they want to sort it out, they'll, they'll give you your opinion, but they don't need to be sitting down having a meal and all sorts of frilly stuff. Okay, thank you. Councillor Javeka. So can I move a, a change? An amendment? An amendment? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll uh, move an amendment to remove the uh, fundraising aspect of it. Thank you. Second it, Councillor Rogers. Second. Discussion, discussion on the amendment? Councillor Javeka. You know, I think there's a point in time when fundraising is going to be relevant, uh, but I think first we need to flesh out some of the ideas and uh, I mean we've already got uh, the word out for fundraising and, and stuff uh, and I think that'll be part of the, you know, part of getting these things back in shape, but at this point I think we're premature. Thank you. Councillor Rogers? Yeah, to put it briefly we're uh, we're we're asking for a hundred bucks compared to the overall picture of everything those are just nickels and dimes so let's not trip over all of that um, with with the respect later on of fundraising I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, the attitudes gonna be from these guys that that okay we, we've looked at it now we can actually start doing some real fundraising okay thank you Further discussion on the amendment? Are you ready for the question? Councillor Wilbur, are you still with us? She's muted. Okay, good. Well, no, that's not good. Um, are you uh, all in favor of the amendment? Opposed? It's passed. On the motion? You ready for the question? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So now we're going to go back to item six. Uh, we're at uh, nine o'clock for our delegations. 6.1, our first delegation this morning. We have Teresa Gladu, Jennifer Neese, Bob Bussey, and Lana Williams in attendance regarding the proclamation for March 21st, 1st, 2015 as International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Is there a delegation here? Yes. <coughs> yep. Fresh water has global movement with racial discrimination. So 
Whereas in 1966, the United Nations declared March 12th the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And whereas racism destroys the very fabric of opportunity, fairness, democracy, and mutual respect necessary for strong and healthy communities. And whereas the city of Dawson Creek wishes to join with community groups across the province in working towards the elimination of racism so that every British Columbian can participate fully and equally in the life of our province and country. Now therefore, I do hereby proclaim March 21st as the International Day for the Omen, Elimination of Racial Discrimination in Dawson City. Also, we have an event coming up on Saturday. It's being held at Sedate Hall. It's called Celebrating Diversity, and we have different um, people from different communities coming in. We have the people from the communities from India, the Filipino, the Aboriginal, the Métis, and we're just going to put on a great, great show. It's $5 at the door, and there are door prizes. I think I'm supposed to get a door prize from the city today. <laughs> 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 and our mayor's going to come sing and dance. <laughs> so, <laughs> so please come on down and uh, enjoy our our, different, our show that, uh, that um, celebrates different cultures in our community. All right? Thank you so much, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. You'll be back. You'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Six point two uh, on the uh, delegation is uh, our s yes, Peter Nielsen, Energy Manager, City of Dawson Creek, in attendance regarding our Earth Hour proclamation. Morning, Peter. Morning. Come up and we'll read our block proclamation and. Uh, Whereas Earth Hour is a global movement that began in Sydney, Australia in 2007, encouraging individuals, businesses, and governments to take positive actions for the environment by switching off their lights for one designated hour. And whereas Earth Hour 2015 is being held from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 28th, and the theme for 2015 is Change Climate Change. And whereas the city of Dawson Creek will once again be participating by shutting off all non-essential lighting at city facilities during Earth Hour and encourage all residents in and around Dawson Creek to show the world they care by turning lights off during that hour. Now therefore, I do hereby proclaim 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 28th as Earth Hour in Dawson Creek. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate that. Thank you. Get it, Jeremy? Close <laughs> enough. Uh, 6-3, uh, we have Chelsea uh, Modishaw, Watershed Technician, and John Kalischuk. Water Resource Manager in attendance regarding our World Water Day proclamation. Actually, good morning. we've got Kit Fast. John's not here? No, we have Kit Fast. Oh, good morning, Watershed Society. Good. Come up front and we'll uh, read this up. All right. Whereas an international day to celebrate fresh water was recommended at the 1992 United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, the United Nations General Assembly responded by designating March 22, 1993 as the first World Water Day. And whereas International World Water Day is held annually on March 22 as a means of focusing attention on the importance of fresh water and advocating for the sustainable management of fresh water resources. And whereas each year World Water Day highlights a specific aspect of fresh water with this year's theme is water and sustainable development. The City of Dawson Creek is inviting the community to participate in upcoming events and encourages all residents in and around the surrounding communities to show the world they care by conserving water. Now therefore, I do hereby proclaim March 22nd, 2015 as World Water Day in Dawson Creek. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Thanks, Kit. So this Sunday, uh, the city will be hosting a tour. It will start at nine o'clock, and it'll be a World Water Day tour of the reclamation plant. And then busing is going to be provided from the reclamation plant out to Shell's Sonata Camp, where residents and community members and participants will be able to see what Shell is using the reclaimed water for, get an understanding of that process, and then have a lunch provided. So if anyone is interested in joining the tour, they can contact Melanie Turcotte by March 18th, and they'll get signed up for that. Awesome. And on behalf of the Tossie Watershed Society, just want to <clears throat> recognize the city's efforts to keep the issues about water on the forefront and their efforts to understand this kind of watershed. And then uh, a couple of things that are happening through the year through the Watershed Society of Tossie Art Gallery is we're running a youth engagement project through Central Middle School. Uh, we hired an instructor who helped out running bags in one of our classes. And they'll do a long, month long project. Uh, combining art and investigating the watershed, the Dust Creek watershed. And then that will culminate in a small exhibition that will hopefully travel through the Northeast and end up in the Dust Creek uh, Art Gallery in September. And we will have a, an exhibition uh, around issues around water called Surface Tension, Views on Water. And this will be an invitation to artists in BC and Alberta to uh, submit work, have an exhibition for the month. And that will coincide with uh, uh, well, Rivers Day. BC Rivers Day. BC Rivers Day. And so, you know, once again, we we'll bring issues around, around water. So, we invite you to pay attention to those things. And thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, item 6.4 We have Lana Williams and Rhonda Palchinski. Rhonda Smith, I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, now a friendship center in, in attendance regarding the soup kitchen. So good morning ladies, good welcome. Morning. Good morning. Is this where we go? Yep, right there is perfect and uh, so welcome and uh, thank you for coming this morning and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, thank you for having us this morning. Um, I'm Lana Williams, I'm the executive of the uh, Nowakin Friendship Center and this is Rhonda, um, she's our wonderful cook there. Uh, we've come today uh, to, uh, if I could get you give some stats to you first, and then we could possibly take questions later. Um, as you all know, with the uh, fund cut, funding cuts, government, federal, um, our soup kitchen, which has been a vital part of this community for 30 years at least, um, we have lost our funding for this vital thing. Our stats um, show that um, January and Feb just January and February of this year uh, we have fed over 2,245 people. We hold our soup kitchens Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays uh, from 12 to 1 and we serve um, hearty soup and bannock butter. Uh, we try to serve, um, you know, fruits and things like that. Uh, we've served, uh, for uh, youth alone in January, we served over 50 youth. Um, our stats are, and we found that in the last few months, especially, I don't, I probably due to the economy, um, that our numbers are going up. So we're kind of putting out a plea for help right now. Um, we have enough funding to get through till the end of March, which is <laughs> coming up quote, very, very quickly. Uh, if we have to, we're, so we're, you know, basically <laughs> we're pleading uh, to all, to the city, to, to the community, to help us. Um, with the soup kitchen until we can reapply uh, and try to get some more funding to keep this soup kitchen open. And that's why we're here today. Thank you. Councillor McFadden. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. Uh, 
how much is the shortfall? Like, do you how much do you do you need to keep your soup kitchen going on a monthly basis? On a monthly basis, I would say we need about. Um, if I can put it into a bigger perspective for you, um, it takes us about forty-two thousand dollars a year to run that soup kitchen, and that's to pay for wages, um, buy food, um, you know, uh, just condiments, necessities, uh, and that that is about what it takes us, and that's really pushing it. Uh, that's taking it right down to zero. Um, like I said, I think we probably would need around at least $5,000 <coughs> per month, if not more, to keep that soup kitchen running. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Where um, I have one, Your Worship. Um, Madam, can you tell us how much you actually, you guys have had your gaming grant um, cut, and so I'm just wondering, what did you lose from the gaming grant? Uh, what we did this year um, is uh, we put in a game, uh, normally they have uh, used the short form for the gaming grant and have gotten the same amount every year. However, because um, our stats we find in the city of Dawson Creek are going up, um, we are feeding way more people. I need to pay, um, I need to pay my staff uh, so we tried to go for a little bit more money on our grant this year and we were totally knocked down to nothing, absolutely zero. Okay, so what did you apply for for the grant? What was the amount? We applied for 100000 Okay. What did you normally receive? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mayor. Normally we, re we received the 42000 and that just kept us, just our heads above water. Thank you. Further questions? So thank you. We'll, uh, this item will come back uh, to uh, Council on the Mayor's Business uh, for a decision later in the uh, meeting. Okay, we have, um, uh, did, we did apply online for a grant from the city. However, we were told that we were too late in getting this in. Um, so um, hopefully, it just says September 30th. It doesn't. Uh, okay. We'll get some further detail from administration when we bring it back under uh, under the mayor's business. Okay. Thank you very much for coming thank this morning. We much. appreciate it. Thanks and thank you so much for the work you guys do on behalf of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item 6.5. Uh, we have Judy McPherson, Aaron Patterson, and Dave McNally in attendance regarding the 21st annual summer cruise. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome. Our cruisers are just filing. Summer cruise, folks, they just come in and they overwhelm you. <laughs> We're going to take it over, outnumber you. Good morning, welcome, you guys. Good to see you again. Thank you. Glad to be here. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, Your Worship and members of Council. Um, my name is Judy McPherson. Blaine Massey is my co-chair here. He's the president of the Mile Zero Cruisers Car Club. Um, we do appreciate uh, the time yourself and Council has given us to let you know about the 2015 Summer Cruise events. Uh, the date is July 10th, 11th and 12th. Um, I will start with a short recap of the 2014 cruise. It was such a successful event. We had the weather, we had 400 plus participants, estimated about 5,000 spectators on the Sunday. Everybody enjoyed everything. The out of town cars that are were arriving were just, it made it such an entire weekend just fun filled. Uh, venturing through our city, you know, the out-of-town guests, they learn what Dawson Creek is all about when it comes to our hospitality for guests. And the Mile Zero Cruisers Car Club, we try and represent that daily and especially during the summer cruise. Um, 
this year the Mile Zero Cruisers, uh, we plan on meeting or exceeding these 2014 numbers. We're moving into the high social media age. We've uh, really, really, really put this out here because we want to, you know, uh, we want to reach people. We want to interact with other car clubs. So we're trying to use this as a, a great way of inviting the old and new participants into our 2015 summer cruise. Of course, we'll still use the newspaper advertising uh, utilizing a wide area of distribution uh, covering all parts of BC and Alberta. The, in 2014, we had the Mustang Alley. It celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Mustang. This year, we're going to move a bit differently. One of our sponsors is set forth and uh, the General Motors line of classic and new vehicles are going to be shown as a main sponsor group. Our members, I'm new to this club. I've always participated in Summer Cruise, but this year I've stepped right into the mix with the car club. And you know, I am so amazed. Everybody just steps up. We really want to make this a superior event. We offer local groups, sponsors. They're, they have a venue to reach out. They show, you know, local and out of town guests just again, as the previous ladies talked, how diverse and hospitable Dawson Creek really is. Um, the groups and organizations have a chance to fundraise and raise awareness for their wide variety of causes and activities during this entire weekend. Um, the cruisers have already received many requests about information to our show for 2015. There are a couple car clubs actually that have uh, held their events in BC the same day as ours. They have actually rescheduled to come to Dawson Creek for our cruise. Um, I believe our Mile Zero Cruisers Car Club represents Dawson Creek. It's people, the many sites, the stories that Dawson Creek has to show and tell, you know, from the NAR building with local artists, the Walter Wright Pioneer Village, and of course, the Mile Zero Post. And uh, everybody knows through our little rally, we send all our guests through all these areas so they can have a, a wide range of seeing Dawson Creek. So um, in conclusion, the Mile Zero Car Club can only thank you all in advance for the city's generous support. Um, I do thank you for your time, but one more thing. Um, I was preparing my speech to you and I watched the 2014 council meeting video. And I did notice that the previous speaker came forward bearing gifts. Now, I, I understand you did receive your 2014 t-shirts in a timely manner this year. So to be honest, I panicked. So I did bring you homemade cookies. Okay. One for everybody. I know, that's what I was told, and it worked out very well. I was going to say, could you put my cookies in my mailbox? <laughs> They're all individually wrapped also, so yes, they can. I'll freeze them for you, Shaylee. I'll look after it for you, Shaylee. He'll so, eat them. Judy, can you just email me on how many cookies you left me? <laughs> you know what, I think there's actually a couple extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, we thank you much in advance for your time and support to the Mile Zero's Car Club and our 2015 summer cruise. Thank you. Questions, Councillor uh, Schumann? So um, you said that you were aspiring to have a superior event, and I just want to say that I think you already have a superior event. And uh, I, for one, absolutely appreciate um, the effort that you go to uh, showcasing our city and bringing... Um, so many people to town for that weekend. It's also the weekend of my birthday, so I always Ooh. get to celebrate with you all. And uh, I want to wish you all the best of luck for this year's event. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor McFadden? I just noticed there's an ask uh, attached to the letter that we received. We'll deal with that under Mayor's business. Yep, we'll bring it back under Mayor's business. Thank you. Thank Further you. questions? Can I ask, um, do you know last year, so it was my first year to be able to go through as and I uh, did the selection for Council's Choice, I think, and walk through and, and I was amazed at that 
number of 420 or 430 entries and walking around all, all, all of downtown and then some when you go back now into 103rd Avenue or, um, so what's the capacity? Do you have any idea what the capacity is gonna be? What's the number where you're gonna say, hold on a minute, we're at, uh, we're at a top end here in terms of, is it 600 or is it 500 or, have, do you know what that is? Have you thought about that? Not sky really a lot of thought to sky's the limit. Sky's the limit for us. I mean, we've got a lot of downtown areas to yeah. use, and and it, it, the more streets we take, I mean, we got lots of streets to take yet, to, and it just brings the downtown alive. Yeah, I, I'm thinking probably five, six hundred would be the max that you I'm would thinking. that you'd be able to handle. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I was just uh, honestly, yeah, I, it was just a question to me in terms of when you start seeing it. Where, at what point would you say, hold on a minute, we're not gonna, we can't go to seven or eight hundred? I think uh, could, I, I think yeah. the sky is the limit. Yeah. We, we could go to whatever, like, but we have the curling rink rented and stuff where we, we put on the supper for it, all our people that show up. Sure, we have lots of room. Yeah, okay. I mean, we there, there's so many people behind us, like the whole town is behind us that we could get it done. I know yeah. we could. Yeah. And the other one to me is this so this cruisers i think to me and I, i'm only going to speculate and i'll ask the question was started as a result of the old show the classic car and cruising around uh town but it also has kind of got a transportation theme to me in terms of what you're doing and recognizing uh, the classic vehicles the automobile transportation has there ever been any thoughts to uh, take it into an also a, a, an, another tangent around transportation and make it even uh, the um restoration of the larger vehicles like the tractor trailers and all that kind of stuff as another tangent to the event we welcome all that to our to our, our car show now like we, we've had uh, tractors in we the past show up at our show airplanes we've, airplanes we've had oh, okay. lots Good. of yeah everything's if it's got tires on it or whatever it's it's invited good <laughs> thank you so thank you very much we got a couple of questions or a couple of um, uh, asks in there and I think there's also we give a grant to the cruisers and uh, and, grant. and uh, we'll bring that through thanks so much and again to everybody uh, the club uh, we appreciate as Councillor Schumann said how much we appreciate the efforts that you guys have made this into a significant uh, event in the community and it was uh, last summer was a pretty cool couple of days uh, hot days yeah, and uh, it was pretty nice so thank you thank you Who's going to look after the cookies? Well, I'll look after the cookies no. in the break here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was. Uh, thanks, Judy. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. So we're at 9 30. We'll take a uh, quick five minute uh, recess and uh, resume shortly. Um, next item on the agenda is back into reports. Uh, item 7.2 we have a report 15034 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding the Lone Star Nightclub. Councillor Javekov. I'll move the uh, recommendation. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor McFadden. Discussion. Councillor uh, Parslow. Point of order. Why is Councillor Javekov not required to read the Because I think I caught everybody off guard and <laughs> everybody <laughs> didn't bring have it pulled bring up. The re bringing the report up. If we so. wait about 10 minutes, it'll come up on my yeah, computer. No, I <laughs> I thought the expense item. of the multi-paragraph <laughs> Mary's going to cut a little slack at the first okay. item off deep after the break. It's an extremely <laughs> long recommendation, Your Worship. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Further discussion? I can all, read it. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 7.3, we have uh, report number 15035 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding our policy meeting schedule. Councillor Parswell. I'm going to make a slight amendment to this recommendation. Um, the report number 15035 from the Director of Corporate Administration Repolicy policy meeting schedule be received and approved as presented with one change that the policy on fees and schedules, is that what it's called? Use of fees and charges. Use of fees and charges be placed in the first meeting. Okay. That's March 30th. Second to Councillor McFadden. Jim? Uh, through your worship, based on your earlier motion, uh, which is to uh, accommodate the um, curling club for this year, 
The current scheduling of the fees and charges is June 14th, which will be uh, uh, the meeting after you have made your final decisions about what you're going to be doing with the Memorial Kin and Curling Rinks. So it actually, its current timing might be pretty useful for you folks. Okay. Just perfect in terms of scheduling through that. Does that, that work for you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So we're moved, seconded, Councillor McFadden. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 7.4, we have report number 15026 from the Director of Development Services regarding the development permit application 1502 from Western Canadian Properties Group. This one I'll take it a little bit. My stream's blank. It'll come. It's just loading up locked. Are we waiting for a motion? Uh, I think everybody's just waiting for it to load up so that they can make the motion. I've got, I'm waiting for it to load myself. I've got mine loaded. Okay. All right, so the floor is yours. Okay, I'll uh, move the recommendation. The report number 15-026 from the Director of Del Development Services. Redevelopment permit application from WCPG Ridgeview Homes Limited be received further that development permit number 15-02 for the development of 50 town home units on lot 2 section 22 township 78 range 15 west of the 6th meridian peace river district plan EPP 26863 except plan EPP 32635 be approved in principle and issued upon successful completion of the required 10-day notification period and receipt of the required financial security of $173,491. Thank you. Second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion? Councillor Rogers? Okay. Um, last meeting, is this, the same, is this the same area he was talking about? Um, asking for approval at our last meeting and there was still concern with the retention point. Yes. Um, so if we approve this, we're basically saying the, that the cul-de-sac that he was asking for a variance on, we're letting that go through? Uh, through your worship, yes, that is what we're saying. Uh, we have uh, advice from um, our legal counsel that uh, the cul-de-sac issue is actually falls within the discretions of uh, Kevin and his department it doesn't require a council decision and uh, we also have advice regarding the catchment pond which is coming up in your closed meeting after this but the advice from the lawyer is that it's not appropriate to deal with it a development permit I'm sorry that it's, it's, it's not what not appropriate to deal with it a development permit uh, it would be a matter more for the subdivision bylaw or for the building permit. That's the advice from the legal counsel. I'd move that we um, we have a motion. For, we have a motion on first. I would. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be in favor of the motion um, based on the information I just heard. Thank you. Further discussion. Councillor Parslow. Just wondering if it would be helpful to Councillor Rogers if this matter was uh, resolved after we'd had our in camera discussion around the, de the uh, water retention pond. I mean, I'm comfortable with what's happening, but just to help Councillor Rogers, maybe. Uh, Councillor Javekov? Uh, my understanding that this goes to a 10 day uh, period which we have another crack at it then, eh? Uh, through your worship, you would not see it again unless there were uh, uh, comments received. Uh, but those comments could, for instance, be a staff report back to you on the detention ponds, depending on the outcome of your closed meeting. Yeah, yeah. so the, the issue will be dealt with through the closed yeah. uh, as a result of that agreement. This um, piece right here in the motion we have in front of us is dealing with a development permit for that next phase of it, which then is contingent upon yeah. the next piece of the infrastructure discussion we'll have enclosed. If I got that right, Jim? Yeah. Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. As you saw, if you read your closed, 
uh, the uh, opinion there is basically that this is the, the phasing that needs to go on for these approvals. Thank you. Councillor Parslow? No, that's exactly why I'm in favour of okay. dealing with it now. Just if Councillor Rogers need <coughs> to reflect more on that other thing, we could have deferred. Mm -hmm. sure. I'm comfortable with it. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Ready for the question? All in favour? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Item 7.5, we have report number 15036 from the Director of Development Services regarding the development permit number 1504 from Jonathan Simmons, Simmons uh, rear 801 110th Avenue. I'll make that motion. Moved by Councillor Wilbur. Seconded. Would you like me to read it out? Yes, please. Okay. I make the motion that report number 15-036 from the Director of Development Services regarding development permit 15-04. 801 110th Avenue requesting a variance to maximum height of the principal structure from 12 meters to 17.5 meters, a variance of the front parcel setback from 5.5 to 1.9 meters, and approval of the development of a 58 unit, oh, now my screen went blank, 58 <laughs> unit apartment building on lot A, section 10, TWP 78, range 15, W6M. PRD plan 21137 be received. Further, that staff be directed to proceed with the required 10 day notification period. Thank you. Second to Councillor Schumann. Discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Item 7.6, we have report number 15043 from the Director of Development Services regarding development permit number 1507 from PV Mart 1300 Alaska Avenue. Councillor Parslow. I move the report number 15-036 from the Director of Development Services, Redevelopment Permit 15-04, 801 110th Avenue, request a variance to the maximum, oops, am I reading? <coughs> am I reading the right one here? Keeping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm Excuse still waiting I, for mine. Sorry, I, I thought I had the PV mark one up here. Sorry, the wrong one came up. No problem. So maybe Councillor Shu can read it for me. I, I, I have nothing either. <laughs> I got nothing. Anyway, I'm favorite PV Mart. Sure. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I hit the button for the PV Mart. Something came up, but it was the previous one. Would you like me to read it? I have it on my screen. Thank you, uh, Councillor Wilbur. Um, report number 15 zero four three from the Director of Development <laughs> Services. <laughs> RE development permit 15-07 be received further that DP 15-07 authorizing the development of a 554 meter square addition to the existing PV Mart at 1300 Alaska Avenue be approved in principle and issued upon successful completion of the required 10 day notification period and receipt of the required $2,500 financial security. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor McFadden, discussion? So just a, for me, a really great uh, bit of news for our community that you see uh, retail development, retail established retail uh, business in our community that's uh, re relocated from out across from the golf course into town, built a new building. I don't even know how long ago it was. And now to see that expansion, I think it's just a, a really good uh, announcement for our community and really uh, pleased to see this happen. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Item 7.7, .7, report number 15037 from the Director of Development Services, redevelopment permit number 1505 from Dirk Kotsky, Kotsky, 1428 102nd Avenue. Councillor Schumann. Um, I move the report number 15 from the Director of Development Services regarding development permits 15 05, 1428 102nd Avenue, requesting a 2.54 meter variance to the minimum frontage required, and approval of the development of a fourplex on a lot on lot eight, lot two, section 15, TWP 78 range 15 West the Six Meridian PRD plan 2958 be received. Further, that staff be directed to proceed with the required 10 day notification period. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor Rogers, discussion? You know, to me, the, you, you look at these things that are uh, being developed within the community and you're starting to see this infill of the community where you're starting to see really uh, significant uh, 
opportunities created by that availability of what used to be the biggest issue we had in our community 20 years ago was land bank and now that's that infill not only the development of subdivisions and development of property but here's another great example of infill within the core of probably the most established piece of our uh, community in terms of the longevity of having that 102nd Avenue so another really good uh, good piece of uh, news further discussion I just, Council Rogers yeah I just had a co comment um, I noticed on the um, on the development permit form they fill it out and it's got the four hundred dollar cost charge for the development and uh, this goes back to the previous ones with uh, Jonathan Simmons I believe it was um, and then they're they're asking for a variance but the variance is zero where normally it would be three hundred dollars I just wonder why we're waiving the the variance fee on those permit applications Thank you Jim I'll just kick that over to Kevin. Through your worship, if there's a development permit along with a variance, we tie it in with just uh, the one cost of the development permit, which is the higher one, four hundred dollars. Through your worship, is that policy? Through your worship, that's what we've always done. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Good question. Further questions? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Report number 15041 from the Director of Development Services regarding development permit number 1501 from Andante Holdings uh, regarding the Southwest Quarter Section Environmental Assessment. Councillor Schumann. Uh, that report number 15-041 um, from the Director of Development Services regarding the environmental assessment for development permit 15-01 no. be received. Further, the Council directs staff to Sorry. issue development permit number 15-01 for the development of a two, 220 lot subdivision in the southwest quarter section of 23 Township 78 Range 15 West of the Six Meridian upon receipt of the $25,000 financial security. Thank you. Seconded. Councillor uh, Rogers, discussion? Councillor Javetka? Um, the water issue here with this development came up at the budget meeting and I didn't hear clearly what the explanation was. I wonder if I could uh, get clarification on how this subdivision is going to be supported for water. Again, Your Worship, I'll kick that over to Kevin. So through Your Worship, the newly constructed Lorraine Reservoir on the north side of town that's being commissioned uh, this week. Once that's online, that will be feeding and linking in across and that will be supporting that whole north and northeast sector of town. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, anything further? Further questions? Ready for the question? All in favor? Oh, sorry, Jim, did you have a question? Yeah, I should just note you have a number of um, comments received on this matter, which are attached. Uh, most of them are not relevant to the uh, Riparian Area Development Bylaw. Most uh, are around uh, uh, dissatisfaction with the zoning on the property, which dates from the 90s. So, you know, that. That horse has left the barn, so the comments are not necessarily relevant to what you're, what's in front of you. Sure. Thank you. Further comments? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 7.9, we have report number 15044 from the Director of Community Services regarding RFP 2015-03 for innoxious <coughs> weed control. I've Councillor Javekov. <laughs> Uh, I'll move the recommendation, the report number 15-044 from the Director of Community Services, re RFP for noxious weed control be received further that Council award the request for proposal to MPG Contracting Vegetation Management for a three-year term commencing spring 2015 for noxious weed control within the City of Dawson Creek boundaries with the hourly rate of $43 for the duration of the term. Thank you. Seconded? Councillor Schumann, discussion, questions? Comes to Council because of the three year contract, Jim? That's correct, Your Worship. Thank you. The $43 an hour rate, um, uh, noxious weed control is one of those things that's very weather dependent, but over the last three years, we've averaged about 25,000 uh, all told across the various uh, areas that we have to uh, control. So. Uh, we expect it'll be similar numbers over the next three years. Thank you. Councillor Javeka? What was the previous hourly rate? 
I don't know the answer to that question, and I don't seem to have anybody here who might be able to answer it, but I'll find out for you and get back to you. Councilor McFadden? Just a question. Do they uh, do weed control on private property, like on the alleys behind, uh, up on the hill? Sometimes some of the alleys are up there, you see some thistles in that. Or do they just do strictly public owned property? Uh, through your worship, the alleys are publicly owned, but this contract is only for publicly owned lands within our boundaries, so lands that belong to the taxpayers, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 7.10, report number 15038 from the fire chief regarding the elected officials workshop. Councillor Schumann. Report number 15-038 from the Chief Fire Chief Emergency Program Coordinator be received. Further, that the Executive Assistant be directed to forward the names of elected officials that wish to attend the Emergency Management BC workshop. Thank you. Seconded? I'll second that. Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Who's going? Uh, so we'll fo forward that, those names back through to uh, corporate administration and they can uh, coordinate the list and uh, we'll circulate that back through council. That's in town here somewhere. That's in Dawson Creek? No, I think it's in Williams um, Creek and in... April 30th, April 30th, 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock. Here. Here. Yeah. Here? Yeah, I believe it's here. Where did no, I, I read Williams right. Lake and Prince George? Um, just a sec. What's that? They're also being held in those locations. Oh, they're also being held oh, in those also locations? As well as, yeah. okay. Sorry, I didn't see the one from here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Item 8, uh, bylaws. We have uh, report number 15039 from the Director of Infrastructure regarding sewer rates and regulations, amendment bylaw number 4259-2015. Councillor McFadden? So moved. Thank you. Seconded? Councillor Schumann? Discussion? Ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. 8.2, we have report number 15044 from the Director of Corporate Administration regarding our Animal Control Amendment Bylaws. Um, first item, uh, Animal Control Amendment Bylaw 4241, 2015 for consideration of third reading. Moved by Councillor Schumer. Seconded by Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, item two, the zoning amendment bylaw 1416, bylaw 4242, 2015, for consideration of third reading and adoption. Moved, Councillor McFadden. Seconded, Councillor Wilbur. <laughs> See how I did that to her. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. <laughs> I am listening. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw your hand go up, so. It did. It's up in the air. <laughs> 8.3, we have report number 15040 from the Director of Development Services regarding Zoning Amendment Bylaw 1504, Bylaw number 4260-2015, for 10209 10th Street, the Alaska Hotel, Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 4260-2015. Moved by Councillor Schumann. Seconded? I'll second it. Seconded, Councillor Wilbur. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Item 9, uh, Mayor's Business. 9.1 I want to talk about first um, is uh, through administration we've had some conversation and identified that um, this uh, waste receiving facility that we've had and we had originally anticipated that there was potentially a partnership uh, going to be uh, developed with the Peace River Regional <laughs> District in regards to that uh, waste facility, that truck waste facility, receiving facility for us, um, and uh, Peace River Regional District through the electoral area directors and the PRD were really in the situation where in Fort St. John had indicated that they were uh, closing off receiving any facility, any um, uh, uh, waste from outside their municipal boundaries at the end of December and so the all regional district were looking at alternatives and we had absolutely said we were prepared to uh, look at that but we wanted to have some structure in place to ensure the integrity of our system was protected and that the regional district were looking at going to a referendum uh, in order to 
fund the uh, services in partnership with the city. That um, proposal met with some opposition by some of the electoral area uh, directors and residents, and as a result of it, the proposed uh, referendum uh, question on sewer was uh, not moved forward with. But we've identified, and uh, Jim through uh, administration has I identified that the gas tax strategic priorities fund absolutely could be a funding source for us for this capital project and has brought it forward for us. So Jim, I want to throw it over to you and if you can give us some detail on that. Uh, yes, through your worship, when MP Zimmer was here, he mentioned to you that in addition to uh, the Build Canada fund and in addition to the uh, per capita funding that comes from the gas tax fund, there is also uh, a modest but significant fund uh, 28 million dollars a year in BC for uh, what's called the strategic priorities fund and it is uh, tagged at larger projects or projects that have regional uh, application so the criteria in that grant program is that you must be able to show that the um, project has impact beyond your own municipal boundaries uh, and that it has a tie-in to economic development uh, and given uh, the nature of the trucked waste receiving facility, which is to uh, accommodate not only um, septage from uh, residential users in the electoral area, but also from things, septage from uh, work camps set up, for instance, by Encana. Uh, we believe it would qualify. Whether it would rise to the top of the competition or not is unknown, uh, but it's potentially 100% funding. Uh, the application deadline is April 15th, and so we would need a motion from you authorizing us to apply. We have all the engineering because we had to supply it to the regional district for what was going to be a uh, proposed referendum to fund. As you will recall, you had already committed as a council that if the regional district uh, funded the capital work, you would undertake the operation simply by setting a fee at a level that would recover your costs. And so this would be the same model if the fund paid for the truck waste receiving facility, you would set your operational budget at a level that would uh, operate the facility. Thank you. Councillor Parslow, make that motion. motion. Seconded. Councillor Javekov, discussion. It sounds like a good initiative uh, needed. If we can get those funds, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think to me, if any time we can leverage um, the matching dollars of the funds for uh, Build Canada or through this to help build and uh, improve the infrastructure for the city, then I think it's a, why wouldn't we? And uh, certainly the operating costs. Uh, and you know, we looked at the um, we did the uh, uh, fee for uh, the sewage uh, bylaw. Uh, rate bylaw recently and so to me I think if we can get this then we review that and say are we making sure that that is meeting the needs for us and operating the uh, service so great job thank you further discussion all those in favor opposed carried thank you uh, weekend before last on week from Sunday I was down, out on got invited by the Paradise Valley Snowmobile Club to attend their uh, family day event and a uh, Her it was a kind of a, a ride f uh, for the club members they were riding restored and vintage snow machines it was amazing to me to see what's available in the community in terms of one as a recreational activity they have a, approximately 100 members at the Paradise Valley Snowmobile Club they're up by uh, the cabin there that uh, it was just a, it was just a really really good family day lots of uh, fun uh, they had the cabin they had the chili and hot dogs and people riding these old vintage machines and 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 so it, you know it was just one more of those activities that take place in your community where people say oh there's nothing to do in town and da 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 man there's so much to do and as I was there there you got 40 50 60 people out riding these old machines and all these people walking into the cross-country snow um, ski trails uh, doing cross-country skiing as well as snowshoeing and it was just a hub of people and activity going on around there and I just thought what a cool uh, facility that we have right on our borders and and it was just a really fun afternoon and no cost to the city zero <laughs> yeah you know and there's so there's an example of and I'll talk about it in the next one but it, it struck me there's a cabin there that is used by the Paradise Valley Snowmobile Club and I I'm not sure if the skiers have access to it as well but it's right there but it's there's a sign on it uh, $17,000 donated by Encana Corporation for uh, the uh, snowmobile cabin up there and another 
you know, these things that sometimes go unnoticed, unrecognized by us in our community of all the corporate donations that go on in our community that we just sometimes don't uh, get enough uh, recognition to. 793 uh, on um, Friday, Friday was a blur. Uh, Rotary Manor um, and Northern Health and MLA Bernier invited me up uh, to an event where Shell Canada had uh, just replaced the bus at uh, Rotary Manor. Um, for the residents used for transportation so it's a bus that, that uh, is used by Northern, uh, Northern Health, we're operated by Northern Health at Rotary Manor transporting the residents there out to the fair, the parade, the picnics, the daily activities that go on and there's a uh, Shell Canada uh, donating that on behalf of their uh, corporate organization for the benefit of our community and I'm talking to Reg Tetro, the regional manager for Shell's operation in Northeast BC and um, Talked about 1.2 million dollars Shell's uh, donated in northeastern British Columbia uh, in community corporate uh, donations to Dawson Creek, Fort St. John, the region, and the First Nations. So it's an amazing, uh, another amazing indicator to me of the give back that the industry are giving to our community. 9.4 um, on Thursday, the Peace River Regional District uh, meeting I attended and. Um, so we had, as council engaged, the, uh, had received a letter from the Minister uh, Oaks in regards to moving forward with the extension of the fair share agreement and uh, placing the timelines in terms of when they want to get started with the um, discussions with the municipalities in Northeast BC for the extension of that agreement. Uh, they're going to begin this week and uh, it's the, premier, the minister's uh, indication that they want to have the agreement completed by uh, April 30th. This council had endorsed the um, uh, contract and hiring Blair Lextrom Consulting as the representative on behalf of the city to engage in that uh, interaction with the province. Um, on Thursday we brought it forward to the Peace River Regional District because it had been reached out by other uh, member municipalities who uh, wanted to engage uh, with Blair and with the City of Dawson Creek in that uh, discussion with the province. So I brought it forward as a motion on Thursday to the Peace River Regional District that we had done this and that we wanted to uh, bring that forward through to the Peace River Regional District and have those uh, discussions take place through the Peace River Regional District rather than all of us uh, individually. That motion was passed uh, by a strong majority of those in attendance and as such we are now engaged in the um, uh, discussions at, for the extension of the fair share agreement with Blair Lextrum uh, through the Peace River Regional District which will be funding it now by all of us participating rather than just the City of Dawson Creek and um, so we need to move that now forward through through the minister with a letter that uh, that's how we'll uh, be moving it forward. So I need a motion from council to endorse that. Councillor Parslow, seconded. Councillor Rogers, discussion. Any questions anyone have of <coughs> that uh, process? I'm glad things have uh, happened as the way they have. I hope that Schwartz and John and Taylor will get, uh, be enter into this in a harmonious way. Yeah, I think it's you know I think. So far, the um, indications are that most uh, of the municipalities in north, the Northeast, uh, Puskupi, Chetwin, Tumbler Ridge, Hudson Hope, um, and all of the electoral area directors were supportive of moving forward on this basis. Fort St. John and Taylor still uh, have their um, affiliation to the Northeast uh, BC Resource Coalition and are going to be represented and have indicated that in a letter to the minister by uh, the executive director that was appointed by the coalition. So I think, you know, we've got a cohesiveness now, uh, hopefully with the um, team that will be meeting now with the negotiators appointed by the minister uh, and the province to extend this agreement. I'm ecstatic that we're in a situation where we are where we've got this um, really strong view presented now to the province where the majority of everyone is now represented and that indication has been moved forward to the, prem the premier as well as the province and uh, hopefully we see the extension of this agreement in the long term uh, certainty of the fair share agreement for all of us because I think that honestly I think I see that as the most important work each and every one of us as municipalities uh, will do in our whatever four-year terms we have 
Um, this, this fair share agreement is the most critical piece of that business in terms of providing that financial security and certainty for our community. So I'm really happy about how it's moving forward and hopefully we see some uh, results as a result of that and we get it locked down and finished and behind us. So thank you. Yeah, so we got a motion and uh, any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, I was also at an event uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, uh, sponsored by Encana and the, uh, in partnership with the BC Lions. They were in town, a couple of the BC Lions players. They did a, an event at the Calvin Kirk Performing Arts Centre. Uh, and it's called Be More Than a Bystander. And it's an, uh, it's an, uh, an awareness campaign to <laughs> increase the awareness and prevention of um, uh, abuse um, to women. And uh, man, they had some great, great messages within there. And I think it was just the intolerance that we should all have as we see those uh, situations uh, where we have messaging about inappropriate uh, behavior and or messaging towards women and violence against women. And so I just, you know, there's another one right in Canada or here in town and, and promoting a corporate uh, sponsor, a sponsorship of an, a program all across Western Canada and uh, it was really a worthwhile event and I wanted to make mention of it today just because I thought it was such a great message that they are promoting and, uh, and uh, so that was uh, one that we did uh, a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago. 9.6, um, so Craft Hockeyville, right? And so when we were putting the agenda together on Thursday, I said, we got to put Craft Hockeyville on the agenda under Mayor's business because we are going to be one of the top 10 communities. Uh, it was so good on Saturday night to be able to see, uh, for me, the events that took place on Saturday with the community, just the community in, involved and engaged in the, the parade down through downtown and the kids in their skating uniforms, the figure skaters, the speed skaters, the hockey players, uh, walking through town and they just had a really fun, fun time. Um, we come back to the uh, arena where they had a, the organizing committee had some ball hockey events going on, they had some basketball shooting, they just had a really fun afternoon. The Wyoming's Association there out front, they're cooking hamburgers for giving away to anybody that's there and, and it was just a really great afternoon and so I appreciate the help that uh, the city did in terms of helping put it on, uh, stage it. And then uh, everybody went back, or a bunch of us went back at 7.45 that night. They had the screen set up, and we were able to watch the announcement live. And, and it was just a really, really engaging uh, time to me for our community. And, and I wasn't aware of it. So when it was obviously announced, obviously the excitement for all of us, it was like, you'd, I don't know, we'd been nominated for the Olympics or something. It was pretty cool. And, but then, so as the event goes on, it, the, the winning community in this thing gets $100,000 towards rink upgrades. They get to host an NHL preseason game and all of this. And then second, third, get different stages of prizes up to 100000 I think. But third to 10, the communities that are number three to 10 automatically have qualified and won $25,000. So just by making the top 10 in the Kraft Hockeyville nomination process, our community has been awarded $25,000 as a minimum in terms of this competition and so in this contest. And I just can't express the appreciation enough to that organizing committee. They did an amazing job of putting it together. You know, you stand on the sidelines and you can complain and say, oh, this, oh, that. But there's an, there's an example of our community standing up and saying, you know what, we're going to do something about this and we're not going to look to the government, we're not going to look to the city, we're not going to look to anybody else. We're going to take the initiative here on our own to try to do something to make it uh, better. And no matter what happens, no matter what out the outcome, Saturday was a cool, cool day. And for us to get $25,000 now to put towards uh, upgrades to that facility, I think uh, we leverage that back to the groups and thank them for it and make those decisions as we move forward later on. This weekend now, the contest has changed a little bit, I think, from the way I understand it, is that now uh, Saturday, Sunday, uh, the voting starts for the next phase. We're uh, one of five communities in the West and there's five in the East. Voting starts on uh, this weekend. You go in online, you vote for Dawson Creek and, and you vote. I, it looks like as many times as you choose, but those details will be out there and we'll get them out there online and social media through the city and however we have to. But I just encourage everybody to get involved and, 
and support the community and support the message and how cool it would be for us to be able to make that top two represent Western Canada and go against whoever in the East because uh, we would give them a bare bum spank and head up I think <laughs> and um, and uh, we then need to uh, get as many people out voting as possible on the weekend. I made contact with it. Here's a, here's a little side note. So I made contact with a young man at Coach Hockey in, uh, 20 years ago, and he's now a radio announcer in Red Deer. And I know Sylvan Lake won this last year, so I made contact with him, and I said, we got to get a hold of Sylvan Lake and say, what did you guys do? How did So I'm going to touch base with the mayor. I've hooked up with him, and I'll, I'll make contact with him in Sylvan Lake tomorrow and just see if we can find some ideas in terms of what they've done and what they did in order to uh, help some ideas to help uh, engage the community and move it forward. But I just thought it was such a great uh, time, and it's such a great time in our community. You turn what has been a really difficult time for our community into a real positive message and that's what it's uh, that's why Dawson Creek is the number one small city in Canada any questions <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Parslow would you re repeat the statement you made about the a bare bum a bare bum spanking against anybody in the east <laughs> oh, but wasn't there another part to it bare bum spanking well, we're going to give anybody that goes up against us heads up we're going to give them a bare bum spanking it's the heads up part <laughs> <laughs> just giving them a heads up we're I just wanted to ask you that there will be an email circulating through the NCLGA members asking them to support Dawson Creek and get out and vote because we are the only community that falls within that 73% land mass of the province. So I'm putting Great it out there that they also support us and vote for Dawson Creek in Hockeyville. Great idea. Thank and, you. And uh, we all have family and friends throughout BC. Um, I think that we all need to reach out and touch them and say support Dawson Creek. I mean, we have to, little little Dawson Creek is not gonna get that done by itself. We need the support of the rest of the Absolutely, people. and I think that's the thing to me, the more we can leverage the messaging, the social media, our contacts, our organizations, however and whatever we can do to be able to do that and uh, get it out there. It's Jim Shute just, uh, he just shudders with the sensitivity training of the mayor, so he doesn't want me to say anything more about it. <laughs> Councillor Parslow. I'll say that again. I don't know that ICBC had the right policies in place. <laughs> Councillor Parslow. Just a technical question. Uh, should uh, the city be fortunate enough to win this? Um, does the Encana Event Center hockey set up there meet the standards required by NHL? Would any renovations improvements have to take place like happened I think in a couple of communities that have won this yeah I think honestly I th my understanding is the uh, I, th I I'm not sure that we could even ask them and I'm not sure the protocols of how and where the event uh, if you have if you win it then you put on the uh, a uh, preseason NHL game, whether it has to be in the facility or whether if you have another facility, you can put it in there. I just don't know the answers to that, and we'll have to explore that a little bit. If um, I, when, my when question was more the assuming it would be uh, at the center that would, yeah, as you guys added another wrinkle there, but I just wondered if we would meet the standards required because City of Terrace had to put in quite a few improvements. I, I would have thought the Encounter Event Center would, would have been fine. I yeah. just, just wondered if staff knew anything about that. Jim? Yeah, through your worship. So to begin with, it's quite common that you hold your, uh, if you're fortunate enough to be chosen, Hockeyville, that you hold your NHL exhibition game in a different facility than the one on which you would applied because normally enough time hasn't intervened to repair whatever you're after. So in Sylvan Lake, for instance, that was the case. Uh, and the Encana Event Center, uh, the, the issues are always around lighting for television. So the Encana Event Center has already been on national TV many times. It has the lighting for that, has the electrical for that. So. One step at a time. Yes. My understanding too that in many communities that were not able to host that preseason NHL game, there was one held um, somewhere there where the game would normally be, and it was done in honor of that community. So I'm yeah. sure that if um, our event center didn't qualify, then it would be held in Vancouver or Edmonton or somewhere in the name of, of Dawson Creek when we win. You bet. We're going to be hosting it right here in Dodge. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, next item we had uh, this morning, we had a um, request from a delegation from the Soup Kitchen, Alcon Friendship Center in regards to the uh, Soup Kitchen. So I want to bring that forward to Council. 
Jim, they had a question in regards to the grant application and they were too late. Is there um, an opportunity for that to be as a consideration under our grants policy? Uh, through your worship, your grants policy specifically excludes you paying grants that are for operational purposes. You have sought not to make anyone dependent on funding from the city of Dawson Creek, so you put your your criteria, say it'll go into capital or into one-time events, it won't be part of operational spending. Thank you. Councillor Javeka? I'm just wondering uh, if they've got cut off from BC Gaming, um, if there's maybe some politics there, if, or if we could go to bat for them with BC Gaming to reinstate that 42000 a year because uh, you know, it seems it seems funny that they were getting forty two thousand a year, and because they applied for a hundred, they got cut off totally. Oh, like uh, something seems strange there. Can we? Could I ask then if we could ask uh, if I could have a motion made that the council and or, uh, um, charge the mayor to work with our MLA to uh, work with the provincial government to see if we can engage that uh, funding source through gaming. Move, Councillor Parslow, second, Councillor Javeka. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Miles, you're uh, sorry? I just want to add to that because we did have a lady uh, present to us at our NCLGA board meeting that is um, vice on the board for friendship centers within BC. And ours is not the only one that lost funding for their soup kitchen programs. So um, perhaps I can uh, get you in touch with their grant writer that they've just hired because it's not just Dawson Creek. It seems to be all 22 friendship centers in BC that have lost their uh, funding for their soup kitchen program. So it's for, I mean, it's devastating for our center, but it's devastating for sure for some other communities that totally rely on being able to provide that service through grant funding. Um, so it seems that most communities in the north are seeing their gaming funds cut, while the ones in the lower mainland are seeing their funding increase. Thank you. So I'll hold, we'll get this motion in place. Shaley, I'll have a, some brief conversations with uh, MLA Bernier, and then if you can get me that information, we'll put that back together as well. Sure, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, we had a delegation from Mile Zero Cruisers who'd asked that we wanted, they wanted to have a representative from council to um, be there for the event and uh, the uh, council selection for uh, one of the criteria that we, we s um, support. So I need a, and we, ha and we give them a grant as well, Jim? A fee for service, you were not a grant. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Schumann? Was there something about camping in a field? Uh, through your worship, uh, you would need to ask your liaison to the Miles Rural, uh, Park Society to uh, advise that the cruisers wish this again. It's actually up to the Miles Rural Cruiser Society. They have that property under lease, so you can't grant that. They traditionally have, but they need to be advised. Okay, so Councillor Parzal will bring that forward. Thank you. So, um, is there? Does anyone have a specific? Um, I. So I'm happy to be there as well, but I, I think the more of us that are engaged in that uh, event and want to participate in the selection of council of choice or whatever, uh, and I think that's what they were asking. So if there's um, anyone else interested in doing it, I'd be, I think it's the more of us that are there, the better the message. So, so do you need a motion that we do we need a, Do we need to have a motion of that? No. We'll bring it. We'll bring it forward, and when as the event comes closer, we'll make sure that we send a note out to everybody and yep. get us involved. Councillor Parzel. Yeah, I'd like to ask, just ask a question. Uh, I can't recall the rationale why this club receives ten thousand dollars fee for service. So perhaps staff can remind me. Okay. Uh, through your worship, the um, <coughs> concept behind fee for service is that these are services that you would otherwise provide. Uh, that's your overriding statement of principle on fee-for-service. Uh, several years ago, um, council uh, had, who had been annually granting a request for $10,000 under event funding under your grant policy, council said, we're going to uh, perpetually grant this, uh, so let's move it to the fee-for-service. That's what happened. Thank you. So... The council of the day felt that it would be an event that they would ordinarily be involved with as part of their community support. Is that is that a fair summary? Well, 
It's very difficult for me to look inside the minds of counselors, but that was the discussion, yes. Okay. Well, let's put it another way. Is that the logical de deduction I might make from <laughs> the, the basis for why fee for services are granted? So we would, we would then, um, I think it's in there. We need to have a look at it then if that's the will of council to be able to, when we review that uh, policy, to be able to bring it back and say, is that still appropriate for us under the policy that we set for fees and uh, <coughs> services? Fine. Yeah. Council Roger? Yeah, I was just going to say that it's in the 2015 budget um, and that uh, we that is coming up for policy review. I can't really say the date on that, but we are going to be looking at that. I'm aware of. Good. Thank you. You know, I have, I forgot, I got one more I want to just bring up really quickly um, that I made note of. And so I got asked last fall, October, September, October sometime to speak and present at a natural gas conference in uh, April in Vancouver. It's a two day conference on LNG, natural gas, the industry of uh, the province. And uh, so I was asked to present on um, behalf of the city for the impacts of uh, natural gas and the LNG industry uh, as it affects the community. And uh, I presented last year to a conference with Mayor Zackerman and Streeper uh, on a panel and the LNG conference. But this one, um, I'm not sure exactly. It's not the LNG conference, the big one that's usually traditionally held in June. Um, but I am working away on some presentation material. Uh, I had last year, I had Trina Gower help me do a PowerPoint presentation on the community, so I'll be incorporating that into my presentation, as well as working on some update uh, material. And uh, that's on April 15th and 16th. And I uh, will be attending and representing uh, the community. I've asked the um, uh, Kelsey and Sabrina and Angela have been helping me put some other material together. And I'm going to put together a bit of a brochure, a kind of a couple pager on the city and highlights of what the community is and all of that because if I'm speaking I'm gonna get two or three hundred of those out on the table because there's usually about 400 delegates to this thing and so I thought it's a good opportunity for us to put the name out there and uh, I'm gonna put a brochure together through our economic development uh, process and have those on the I'll distribute them at the conference as well when I'm speaking. Council Rogers? Can we just give them the brochure that we have from tourism? Yeah, it's pretty, um, it's it's more than what I, I want to keep it focused on some key messaging within the community and investment and the LNG. And so I'm just going to do like a one or two page brochure almost. Because I don't want to be packing 400 of them either, right? It's <laughs> Councillor Schumann? So um, you're going to be presenting on the benefits and the challenges yep. of the industry. Yeah. So you've got... Um, a nice list I'm sure being that we see a lot of benefit but we also see a lot of challenges. So, the, so absolutely you know you talk about some of the components around that when you see what's what I'm also want to tell the story of Dawson Creek and then the challenges that our community is um, meeting the needs and how we're the challenges of meeting those needs for uh, developing the industry in our community like residential like commercial having property services health education police safety all those things so I want to tell that story in terms of what this uh, this economy in northeastern British Columbia as strong as it is how those challenges sewer wastewater water and sewer all those type, types of things are all issues that we're dealing with and so I'm going to tell that story about what we're doing to ensure we're meeting the needs of not only our community, but the growth of the industry within our uh, region. So that's the that's the context of the presentation material. So anyway, I just wanted to update council on it, but uh, yeah, gives us a chance to talk to four or five hundred delegates for half an hour. And good for you. Good. Thank you. Any further questions on mayor's business? Well, Item. Sorry. You have a question? No, no, I was just wondering. Uh, well, there was, uh, you had mentioned to me the other day about uh, some guy wanting to put a ban thing on downtown oh, stuff. Oh, thank you. I got, I got a question from a guy, a uh, local gentleman who wants to uh, kick off trying to organize a um, music festival in the community. And, and so he's really interested in it. And uh, so I said, um, you know, with about four or five things going on in the last week, but so I'm going to bring it forward and uh, I'm going to meet with him and uh, maybe we'll engage some of the concepts and the ideas. He's really talking about trying to rehook re the uh, old bandstand, that area down there is a really great venue opportunity to be able to put something together. And so he wants to talk about it and he wants to take the lead on it and so I think it's a great idea. Anything we can do in the summer months to 
encourage and engage activities downtown, why not? Councillor Javeco? The uh, Pioneer Village, um, we installed a... Uh, uh, Bandstand. Bandstand. <laughs> out there years ago for oh. that purpose. It's an oh. outdoor one and uh, there has been some effort put into uh, developing, a, I think it was bluegrass out there yeah. and different things, but that's a, a venue that's available oh, already cool. Good idea. at no cost. Um, <coughs> And it enhances the whole sure. facility yeah. out there. Yeah, his his idea was maybe you know what it creates. You put some tents up there for people that have the, maybe downtown merchants want to put up some little uh, things that they do their stuff, and maybe you have hot dogs or hamburger. Anyway, it was just a really good idea, but I never thought of that. And I, you're right. I, now you say that there is. I know there is a bandstand out there. Anyway, maybe if, if yep. Council Rogers, if you're interested, I'll uh, hook you into it, and yeah. uh, we'll have some conversations with him and bring it back to council. Yeah, because the other thing I was thinking is if we tied it in with the Mile Zero Cruiser, so this could happen over a few times too. Yeah, like, yeah, a couple, a few weekends during the summer or something like that. And if it was tied in with the Mile Zero, that'd bring even more people in. Thank you. We'll bring that back and and, and have some conversation and see if we can make some uh, something happen with that. Thank you. Item ten, diary. Uh, through your worship, the uh, Ministry of Transportation. Um, are uh, going to be attending either the next meeting or the meeting after that that we haven't quite finalized that but in one of the next two meetings they'll be here to talk to you uh, as you had requested thank you uh, and not really the diary but just from the earlier questions so the previous three-year contract for vegetation management through the same company MPG contracting vegetation management limited uh, their 2012 and 2013 price was $50 an hour, and their 2014 price was $52.50. So this is uh, $9.50 less. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> Consent calendar. Moved. Councillor Schumann, seconded. Councillor McFadden, discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Strategic priorities? Uh, there We're is no strategic priorities chart yet, Your Worship. Yeah, thank you. Question and answer? Up. Media question? <laughs> I'm almost afraid of this today. <laughs> Pretty sure Johnny picked up or somebody. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just a, just a couple things I need to clarify with Jim, I think. And then I wanted to ask Councilor Wilbur just a question about contact info so she can stay on the line. We'll, we'll make sure she'll be on available. And um, an email here. No, I think that should do it. Thank you. Jeremy? Never. Good man. <laughs> um, so do you want to take a five-minute break before we start Committee of the Whole? Thank you. We'll take a qu uh, quick adjourn. So, uh, back to order and uh, item 15, we're on to our Committee of the Whole reports. And the first one, 15 and this is a item we'll bring back from our previous meeting two weeks ago. So it's really an opportunity. It's really an opportunity, <laughs> sorry, to um, review and bring some uh, next steps to our uh, strategic planning exercise that we went through as council uh, a month or six weeks ago now. And um, so uh, what I thought we would I'd like to do is um, to be able to kind of chunk it a little bit in terms of next steps and the phases for us as council because we uh, we locked into I think three or four key uh, strategic priorities for council in terms of giving some direction that we all had some general consensus in in terms of what we saw as those priorities uh, for us today and tomorrow for the future of uh, the work that we uh, focus the organization on and um, that fiscal infrastructure quality of life being the first probably three that were really critical and important that we saw in terms of the work that this council wanted to focus the attention and uh, direction that we set on behalf of the organization. And so I think um, now that we've got that uh, information back from the consultants, I'd anticipated that the consultants, I think, were going to provide us with a bit more flesh in regards to a plan of how we would move that forward. And um, as a result, of now we we need to now, I think, engage uh, Jim in terms of saying if council are still of the opinion, uh, having now had the time 
to reflect over that last month or six weeks of having that information available to say yes we still agree that fiscal is uh, the strong priority the fiscal gap that financial work that we were doing was still the strong emphasis on behalf of the organization and council uh, the infrastructure the quality of life components now to charge our administration to come back with a um, a draft plan of how that looks from uh, that perspective and then I think the next step from there once we receive that is I'd like to suggest is that we as a council then need to really bring uh, some focus to the fiscal gap work as a, the first step to be able to say what does that mean to us what does that direction that we see we need to provide that um, focus and attention on behalf of uh, the organization through to administration and our expectations because I think we didn't get into that kind of detail um, and certainly from my view that we now we've had that conversation in the past over the past couple of years but now as a new council we see that as an important component but we need to now lock into what are some of those common foundational pieces of that as an example of fiscal gap that we need to give direction on that we see the common areas uh, and what does success look like for us so I'm going to throw that out as a opening comment and I encourage comments or questions from the council councillor Parslow yeah I, I like uh, what you've said very much um, yes we, we we don't know to what degree we each support those directions you know are there some yes buts so I do like the idea that at a future date we will flush out these and see our various comfort levels and what success looks like so I think it's appropriate to, to do exactly what you've said in having Jim uh, I guess generate a, re a report on, on this from the point of view of initial tasks and so on yeah thank you Councillor Rogers yes I um, I just like to say that Councillor Javadkoff you were right at that meeting that we were at um, address the fiscal gap that was in the report I was told um, a month ago that I was two weeks ahead on um, putting that motion forward and that was uh, report number 14-280 in case everybody forgot that number um, I, I think that that um, the things that you were asking uh, your worship was asking um, staff to do was um, put together a report and find out where everybody was at regarding the fiscal gap um, I don't uh, I'm, I'm just wondering now that um, the councils received this strategic plan and the report if there's um, any willingness to actually put it on the table uh, um, soon I would hope and that would be report number 1420 um, I think you've all read it several times I don't need to say it uh, I know Councillor Parslow you weren't at that particular meeting um, but um, regarding um, the like this all ties in with the 2015 budget as well where um, our, our policy we haven't reviewed our policy yet um, we just got our strategic plan back um, budget process starts in um, August I believe um, I commend staff for getting the 2015 budget together um, the amount of direction that they got from council I think was a little bit lacking um, and I'm I know that there's really nothing that 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 uh, council can really do with the 2015 budget except accept it um, without too many changes in it but um, for the 2016 budget that's going to be coming up I've, I've turned my focus primarily to that at this point uh, <coughs> regarding our policy and um, if we had the recommendation 14 um, to 80 on the table um, we would have further direction to um, deal with our 2016 budget so I'm probably putting the cart ahead of the horse again but um, 
I think I think that um, that's something that we should really seriously be looking at because it was address the fiscal gap was a um, it was an agreement among members of council that it was the single most challenge challenging thing that facing the city um, for our future. Thank you. Thank you. So and I think you know that's part of it to me in terms of the the need for us to get into so we say that the fiscal gap um, is the most important uh, bit of work and uh, council agree as a, a number one priority for the organization but this fiscal gap I think we all have our own opinions our own understandings our own beliefs about what that fiscal gap work and strategy is as a strategic priority and so for me my um, belief my understanding of my objective as a strategy as a strategic direction that we set for the organization isn't about addressing it as a specific item or a specific issue but it's the long-term strategic direction we set as the organization as it impacts capital uh, services debt revenue expenditures impacts to services that we provide or don't provide in the long term because to me the fiscal gap isn't about uh, an issue today or tomorrow but it's the long term for our community in terms of how we manage those overall components of the fiscal responsibilities we have in providing the core and the, the, the services that we provide in the community and so that to me is why I really think it's important to have that conversation and once we say here's what we believe to be the strategic the long-term strategic direction for the organization so that we can set debt policy as it relates to infrastructure and capital spending the services in terms of that impact the quality of life are a component within there that we need to understand how and what are they that are going to be a, an affordability as a metric for our organization in the long term that we say we either need to address them in the long term for the having the necessary revenue to meet the needs in the long term or we need to make significant decisions around it and so to me that's how I think about it but I don't know how everybody else does and I think that's where we need to have that conversation so we have some common uh, understanding and direction that we set for administration not for today and tomorrow but the long term and that's how I think about it right so Councillor Javeckoff yeah I, you know I like to simplify things so that I understand them and what we did initially we went through a process where we identified priorities I don't think we want to go back on that and say and start second-guessing our priorities fiscal gap was the top priority to me it's time to sit down as a group and start breaking it down into components that whole strategic planning process the the first priority was fiscal gap let's sit down as a group and start talking about fiscal gap forget all the rest of it for now let's hash our way through the fiscal gap component and you've got your own ideas I'm sure we've all got different ideas than you know <laughs> some of them may be the same but let's that's the great part about democracy <laughs> <laughs> let's sit down as a group and take component by component fiscal gap being the first priority it's already been identified and hash through it, identify it, uh, define it, you know, and then move on from there. So we need to start that <coughs> process. We need a meeting. Um, I think it was proposed that we kick it off, that we put it uh, up as far as priorities, and and I agree that we should. We should get on with it. Like. And I think we're all saying exactly. I hope, uh, if I'm not ex explaining, kind of given the, my view of it, I hope that we're saying the same thing, and I think that's what we are saying. To me, the the I think, and I believe we are that fiscal gap it was and is uh, the top priority for this uh, council, and that's what we need to do. I think the maybe the the how we view what that is, we need to have that understanding and common conversation about us all so that we all have that common view of what direction we're giving to the organization for administration because until we have that until we have that conversation and interaction I think the 
how I, how I, what direction the council sets for the future of the organization is going to be fuzzy and hazy and so I, th I think that's exactly it we need to have that conversation that's what I'm saying get administration to get us that report on the overall strategic plan identifying fiscal gap is the number one priority and then we set that as the first session that we have to get that moving forward for us Councillor Parzel yeah I believe there is a lot of common yeah. you're expressing it different ways but um, I think what you've suggested is right on, and um, if the first, after we receive report from, from staff, uh, if the first meeting, shirt sleeves meetings is about the fiscal gap, fine, then move on, when we do that, move on with something else, but we need to have <coughs> that conversation because I sincerely believe that some of the ramifications of working on the fiscal gap are, are not, Clearly, have not clearly been discussed, and are they, are the ramifications things that we really have in mind? So let's have a frank, open discussion, and I think what the mayor is suggesting is is the appropriate way of going about things. We, it will happen. <coughs> Just a comment: if uh, if we w in staff's report about fiscal gap, I believe the expression is used frequently: transformational change. That takes an awful lot of dialogue <laughs> and understanding. And um, if, we're, if we're talking about long term, as you've just suggested, we need to be pretty going into this with our eyes open and be prepared to change, to refocus, retool ourselves perhaps. It's a journey. And if we want to go far with fiscal gap, it's best to go slow and really develop consensus over what's implied and the first steps. And, pl and plan B, which the council has, it, I think, adopted, um, talks really about the best, the first way of doing this is, is establishing policies. And that's, uh, and that's got to engage the, a lot of people because these things are pretty, my understanding, which may be imperfect, these are pretty profound changes and we want to make sure that we're comfortable with them. And there's a saying, a last comment on this, uh, Professor Fullen, who is a Canadian, re recognized in many sectors as the guru on change, says, if you want to go far, you have to go slow. And that's why I'm fully in support of what you're, you're saying. A series of meetings, let's it's expand, let's open the thing, and uh, move on from there. Thank you. Jim first, and then Councillor uh, Roger. Yeah, I just love so through your worship, um, to correct Councillor Parslow, uh, <laughs> Council has not adopted uh, Fiscal Gap Plan B, um, which is a work plan, basically. Uh, it, was, it was forwarded to Strategic Planning for 2015, and you have in front of you the outcomes. Um, if you look at your five areas of strategic focus that you identified in that <coughs> workshop, fiscal responsibility and sustainability is one. Quality sustainable infrastructure is to, uh, these were actually not in priority order, it's just the second one. Community development and quality of life is a third one. Vibrant and diversified economy is a fourth one. And organizational capacity is a fifth one. Um, fiscal gap uh, is uh, not an outcome, it's a description of a problem. And the problem is into the future you don't have the revenues uh, projected to handle all the expen expenditures that you project. And so your decisions on fiscal gap will impact your ability to reach any objective on any one of those five. Uh, so it's kind of a unifying uh, item in this uh, uh, strategic focus. Thank you, Councilor Rogers. Yeah, I'll just remind Council that it was that it was a um, it was a priority to deal with the fiscal gap in 2014 by Council of the day. Um, with report number 14-280. 208. Uh, 280. <coughs> it's what? It's 208. It's 208? Okay. Maybe. Sorry, it's a typo. Okay, Sorry. I got a typo. Anyways, um, the things that you that you were talking about, Your Worship, was um, is in it. Um, we could sit down if we had if we ever adopt it and all we're going to talk about is 
developing a clear statement and develop um, core values and guiding principles and um, the buy-in for internal and external share, uh, stakeholders um, and a methodology for it. Um, so that's everything that you just talked about. So if we, um, if we, if we, if somebody would move that forward, then it's on the table. We can talk about it. But I, I, I'm, I'm getting the sense that um, maybe council thinks that this is just going to go away. It's not going away. Um, you've received your, your it, it, you've received graphs and charts and information already. Um, I know that the part of that was a uh, strategic planning session is, is the council wanted to see that. You've seen it. Just look at your budget. Look at your 2015 budget. Look at what's happened in the last 10 years and look at what's going to happen in the next five years according to your own, according to our budget. And that's the fiscal gap. That's the, that's the view of the future. It's not looking at the budget today. It's not looking at the budget tomorrow. It's looking at the long-term fiscal uh, challenges that the city may have and it relates to fair share relates to debt policy relates to capital infrastructure plans so to me that's exactly what we need to do we haven't done that as council we need to do that review that in a more wholesome uh, view it's not a budgeting exercise it's a strategic view the long-term view of the community in terms of how we meet those needs and that's how I see it and I don't know that and so I don't know if I'm alone in that but to me, that's the view we need. To, it's not. It's if we if we if we save a half a million dollars in the budget today for this year, we're going to be looking for another half a million next year because the costs just continue. It's not about that. It's about the long-term strategic view of our organization and our community as it relates to how we meet the needs of core capital, core services, and quality of life. And so, to me, you got to look at it from that perspective in terms of giving that strategic direction to the organization, not for today, but for the long term. But Your Worship, how do we, how do we talk about it? How do that's we what, and so that's what I'm saying, we're gonna, we wanna get direct administration to bring that back to us, and then the first issue is the fiscal financial piece, and we start to have that common discussion about understanding what and how we see that moving forward for the organization and all of us, because it's all of us that need to have that the decisions we make every day and the frustrations we have sometimes is because we don't have that common kind of view of what and how we see the fiscal gap uh, work and the financial demands we're going to have in the future of the obligations to the community. As, and that's how I see it, but that's, it's all of us together that have to make that decision. That, uh, that all could be discussed if we, um, if we had our, um, if we followed the recommendations from um, our chief administrative officer regarding um, the latest report for fiscal gap B that he gave us. That's, that's all part of the plan. And, that's, and so that's what I'm saying. We, we need to do that as a group now from the strategic uh, organization. It's not about a one year or two year plan. It's about a five year, 10 year, 20 year view. And so to me, we need to, and that's all I'm saying. We need to have that conversation. Well, then let's put it so on the table. So let's have it then. And that's what we're going to do. That's what I was recommending. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so do you want to bring about the debt I policy like today? To do you want to bring about fair it. share? No. Do you want to bring about core service? We can't do that in one session. No. We got to. Yeah. May I make, what, would you like to make your suggestion as a motion? You, and I will certainly second it. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can. Committee of the whole, Your Worship. No. Yeah, I can't, oh, yeah, can't make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> Committee of the whole. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Javeco. As long as we're throwing out our uh, individual views of fiscal gap, uh, I don't disagree with you that there is the long-term element. But to me, uh, successful corporations have looked after spending as well as the long-term vision. Now, for example, if we decided this year even to eliminate grants from our budget process so we don't <coughs> issue grants anymore. There's $50,000 that we could carry forward into the future uh, to use for other 
uses. So to me, it starts with the basics. It starts with the, you know, the spending. And spending, and I've said it many, many, many times, there's an equation, spending equals revenue. We consistently go after more revenue and the spending isn't considered in, in the whole process. So I think it starts with, uh, it starts with budgets. And the money that you save today, if it's a, an ongoing annual deal, it affects the long term. So anyways, I know we're not discussing it now, but I wanted to get my opinion out there. But I'm, <laughs> and I'm glad you did. <laughs> Costa Roger? So what I'm hearing is that um, we'll probably have a recommendation at, put on the table for next council meeting. Well, we're, uh, I guess my recommendation that I brought forward as a result of the strategic exercise is we, because we, hadn't have, we haven't had any agreement from council, first of all, we did it at a strategic planning exercise, but we haven't agreed at this table uh, now in an open council meeting that those are the strategic priorities uh, that we're going to move forward with for administration. Um, and then we will give direction to our administrator to come up with a, a plan around those strate that strategic <coughs> exercise we did with the recommendation that the first one be our fiscal uh, gap work that we want to have and engage in council to move forward with. Is that, is that, uh, yeah. so I'll make that by way of a motion then. Oh, I can't. Can. Damn it. But you can, oh, sorry, next, you can the next meeting. I'll make it the next meeting. <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> no, can certainly <laughs> just remember that for when we reconvene open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. I was gonna say. Thank you, Jim, that's what I was just gonna say. Yeah. Can we not make a motion once we reconvene open? Yeah, thank you. So save it. Well, I'll save it. Good. Okay. Well, I hope I'm happy. <laughs> you look happy. <laughs> um, next item, 15-2, we have a report from our staff sergeant. Is the staff uh, available? Get them cookies out of the staff. He's on his way over. Maybe you can start with the chief. We'll start with the chief. The report from the fire chief. Good morning, chief. <laughs> I'm getting them cookies. <laughs> getting them cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye now. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it starting to Thank you, Shaylee. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Shaylee's out. Good morning, chief. Good morning. So as, as usual, you have the report in front of you. There's nothing... Uh, that's, that jumps out or, or really, in, in my point of view, needs to be addressed at this time. Uh, we're down considerably from January, but <coughs> now we're back to normal as opposed to January, which was not normal. So, there you have it. If you have any questions or concerns. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? I do. Councillor Rogers? Sorry. Hey, um, apologize to me. Fire Hall Feasibility Study. Um, I've seen it on there a lot. Um, I was just wondering um, when we're going to see that because we're waiting for staff to release it. Yeah. So through your worship, I'd like to ask staff when we think we're going to see the uh, fire hall feasibility study. Okay. Through to Brenda. Your Worship, um, that is with our department, and due to workloads, it's been deferred and deferred and deferred. So um, it can be placed as a higher priority if that is Council's wish. Um, no, I was just wondering because uh, I, I noticed in the capital budgets that we're going to be putting a roof on the fire hall. We've already changed boilers in the fire hall, um, and I just wondered if, if there was going to be something out of that report that says that that building is no good and I just wonder why we're throwing money after it if if, if it's going to be deemed that it's not good enough um, and then I respectfully would like to talk about the training facility um, I've read all of the reports um, and what I couldn't figure out was um, the exact cost of what the training facility is going to be at the end of the day um, like um, 
Like what 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 would what is the hopes and the dreams of the fire department for the training facility? What it should look like? I know that there's a four to five year plan that puts um, dollar values against it by the year, um, and then I also read in the report that there was. Uh, some items that could be done later like uh, the paving part and the recapturing of water and then reutilizing the water um, I just I, I looked at it and I just went um, it's a capital project that the uh, corporation is going to be doing and I know that in the um, it starts out at two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars for the first year and I think in the capital budget there's another three hundred dollars for improvements to it um, and then that carries over four or five years um, and I know that there was also um, other department other fire departments were going to be using the facility and I was just wondering because in the report it, it didn't have a dollar amount um, I know how much the uh, corporation um, the cost charges are for for us to send a firefighter for training um, and I and I believe I looked that up how much it was for a year the cost per year um, and then I, I did read something else in it I, I don't know if council have read the report or not I'll, I'll just kind of muddle through it here but um, the facilities life expectancy is only like five years and then it has to have more improvements done to it because yes the fire does affect the metal and everything else so the the ongoing cost charges like once the once the whole facility gets built and it's being built over over three or four years um, I would rather just see and I, I'm pretty sure the fire department would too is the whole facility just gets built and it's done and then that way the uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a few hundred thousand dollars here and there every single year and then at least the fire the the training facility would be finished therefore it would be more viable to be bringing people in from other communities uh, other fire departments in from other communities noting that um, Fort St. John's budget for theirs was seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that just got turned down by the way so you know if we if we got ours built um, you know we could utilize we could we could create some revenue anyways it, that might even help with the uh, the um, charges that the operation charges that are going to go with it and that was another thing regarding the operations charges I um, the one that was comparable was um, Hunter Mile House I think theirs was ninety ninety six thousand dollars a year to operate it but then they actually had somebody that was a staff that was that was on on site all the time I think um, those were just some of the some of the questions that I had and um, through your worship um, and to the CAO um, would it be okay if um, I actually sat down with the fire department and yourself and we could just flip through the book because I, I really want to be clear on it um, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm not in favor of it uh, I am in favor of it um, but I just want to uh, because I don't want to have a citizen coming up to me or a shareholder coming up to me and saying oh yeah you started up this project at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars now look at it five years later it's over a million dollars um, I, I would like to just get a true actual cost and just kind of the kind of get a feel for from from our from our chief um, what he would really like to see out there um, I know that they've they've added on a few things here and there but I'd really like to see what the facility would look like because I've looked at a bunch of other ones and I think what you're asking for is not enough so you can absolutely <laughs> you can absolutely sit down with Jim and go through that whole business case uh, in detail and well actually your worship um, is that a conversation the whole of council wants to have at a at the next budget meeting for instance uh, so um, sure there you should be aware that we have not asked for everything we would desire I don't have a department head who's brought you anything that is everything they desire 
They brought you what they need because we don't believe ourselves to be in a financial position to ask for everything we want. Uh, so there is none of that. Uh, and I would hate to see Shorty's department penalized if he gives you what he would absolutely want rather than what he needs. Um, I don't think that's good budget practice. Uh, secondly, uh, nothing has been developed in the um, in this budget request. It's a capital budget request. Nothing has been developed around it being a revenue generating facility. We haven't looked at that. We were focused on training our own folk uh, and happy to make it available to other folk, but not on the basis of how much they would pay. So that hasn't been looked at. These are all new things. If it's necessary for council to look at those things, um, not in this committee of the whole, but once you're out of the committee of the whole, you could direct all of that to come forward. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take to prepare any of that because none of that work has started yet. Um, but if it's necessary to council to have that work before you can consider the capital request, we can try to get it done in the context of this year's capital budget. If we can't, then it's a project for next year. Okay. Yeah. I, I noticed that the, it was, it, it's been going on for a long time and appreciate your patience because I noticed the report was 2008 um, so this is something that I believe the fire department has wanted for a long time um, and I, 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 I just have to intervene this is not about what the fire department wants this is a response to the site um, the underwriter sur underwriter survey coming in and identifying that your folks weren't trained well enough and that was going to cost you an insurance grade after which you commissioned a fire department master plan to how to meet what the fire underwriter survey said you needed to do to keep your insurance grading. That training center was identified. This has got absolutely nothing to do with what the firefighters want. This is what the community needs. Sorry, I used the wrong word. I did use the word need previous to that. Sorry. Um, I know that there is a need for it, as I had previously stated. Um, I would just like to know what the actual cost at the end of the day it's actually going to end up costing. Whatever council authorizes. Yes, please. So the initial project was put over a number of years because we didn't have enough funding in one year to complete it. So I think it, uh, if my memory is correct, it started about three years ago and it's a five-year project and it's budgeted at 800000 We do not have an operational budget put forward in the five-year yet, but I'll be talking to the uh, uh, deputy chief to start putting that in um, if he has an idea of when it's going to be operational. If it's over that, then an additional funding request will be coming to council. And of course, that's dependent on the RFP going out on the original concept of the training facility. Okay. 2015, pardon me, 2015 is the big year, the big dollar year with 350 in it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That was the question I wanted answered was how much was it going to cost? I couldn't find that anywhere in any of the reports or even any, anywhere in the budget that it was going to be a total of $800,000 to start it. Um, and uh, further to that, I'd like to ask the Chief, do you have, um, there, I believe it's, I can't think of the right word right now, but there it's, um, like when you set up your training program and everything else, um, we do have the, uh, like there is a member of the fire department that is certified for the training and the training program itself, I had read somewhere that it costs about $100,000 or something like that to set the actual training program up. Is that wrong? I'm not sure what training program you're talking about. I do know that uh, both the deputy and myself are uh, certified through the Justice Institute to certify our firefighters in the NFPA program. Okay, that's the 1,000... 1001. And yeah. yeah, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rogers. <laughs> Any further questions? Thanks, Chief. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Staff Sergeant... Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you very much, Worship, Councillors. This is my first official one. You didn't bring your uh, uh, wingman today. Counterpart? <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> no. Nope. Okay. Uh, 
Well, I guess my first month here started with the bang, to say the least. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, first, I'll say Corporal Rutledge has now moved to Penticton. His last day was Friday. Um, we have a candidate identified for his position. Uh, he has to go through the, the paperwork and the proper channel to officially get this promotion. But he's in house. He's on general duty right now. So we're just maybe a couple of months. He'll be taking over the GIS. He's got experience with major crime investigations. So we think he's more than qualified to fill that position. Um, myself and Sergeant Richard, we last week we viewed two applications for uh, the corporal vacancy on the watch. We've selected one candidate and it's working its way through channel now. So I would say a matter of a week or two we'll know, we'll be able to release the name. Uh, very experienced, like we were kind of surprised actually. So we'll make good use of that person. Um, File-wise, we had 16, 690 calls for service month February compared to 5E last year. Uh, the assaults were up, but I must say that uh, we've been able to identify one person that was responsible for a number of them, and that person is now in Prince George in custody. So you'll be coming back for court down the road. Um, Break-ins were up a little bit. And two of them, we know for sure they were related to drug, the, the drug trades. There were safes where weapons were stolen. Um, that's the one that leads us to the next one, which was the uh, imp reported incident of a uh, kidnapping and a shooting. Um, <coughs> that is still very active, so I'll be limited as to what I can say about it. Uh, what I can say is we've executed three search warrants at three different locations over the last four weeks and we recovered a number of handguns, assault rifles, shotguns, and body armor, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, drugs and money. Um, we seized over 400 exhibits that's being catalogued as we speak. Uh, it's just a big daunting task right now. It's just hard to manage all that number. Uh, we're planning a, a display for the media when things settle down. So we'll show you exactly what we seized and what we're facing on the streets now. Um, I want to thank the original GIS section out of Fort St. John and the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit out of PG. They gave us a heck of a hand on that one. and. Uh, it moved so fast that it was very much appreciated. Um, the legacy store robbery. Our investigation led us to Fort St. John, uh, a vehicle associated uh, with the robbery, we believed, uh, was located there. And we executed a search warrant on that vehicle. Unfortunately, we didn't find anything of significance related to the robbery but we were able to identify some people of interest that we're working on right now. Um, I had a meeting with Ryan McIver on the Encana events coming up for April and uh, me, Mike and Ed will work on an operation plan to as assist with the resource requirement because some of them will be needed on some of those functions. And I've also completed the statistics for the uh, mental health question that you raised, Councillor. Yeah. And uh, I prepared a little document here that I can sh share with you. Okay, over the past year, Dustin Kremember responded to 174 mental health act complaints. Uh, 71 cases resulted in apprehension under the mental health act. Uh, by police where public or personal safety was a concern. 41 cases were recorded where the subject was willingly escorted to the hospital. 
uh, 18 case report recorded as assistance files to the hospital to either locate or arrest a subject under a director's warrant of apprehension. Uh, 44 cases were situations where the complaint was unfounded. We'll attempt to a place and we don't have grounds to apprehend a person and we can't see anything wrong as far as the person's safety that therefore we don't really take action ourselves. It's mostly left with family and friends to deal with it. So um, the issue we have and it's, it's all over the region is if we apprehend somebody and we take them to the hospital for an assessment, they're in our custody. So we're not allowed to leave that person at the hospital until such a time as a physician has examined this person and do an assessment on them. So we are there for, for as long as it takes. And the average is three to four hours. So once we're at the hospital with that person, the member is no longer available to take calls on the streets. He's tied up with that person. That's his sole responsibility. And then if the physician decides to admit that person, then they take over custody and then allows us to to leave the hospital at that point. <coughs> yes. Um, so what you're talking about there where you have to stay with them, yes. is that the 41 plus the 18 cases or just the 18? It's just, uh, that's the 18, the one that comes under our custody. Okay. Yeah. Because when we go, in all fairness to, to the hospital people, we're not considered a priority. It's not like a daring needs a person is dying or needs immediate assistance. They're just there to be assessed. So after time, they're gonna squeeze dust in between emergencies. So that's why we end up having to stay there sometime for three, four hours till they can fit us in for the assessment. So that's 18 times three or four hours yeah. over the year. Yeah. It's not as bad as some of the figures I was hearing from other communities, so. But that's the average. <coughs> that's just not good, but just an average. Yeah. It could be worse, right? Well, a lot better. Yeah, and I have to understand that, you know, the health care is just tied up and there's other priorities and that's fine. It's just, just the way we're doing business. Thank you. Thank you. Staff Sergeant, anything further? Any questions? Thank you. Oh, sorry, Councillor Javeco. <coughs> the, and I don't remember, I saw it probably on Facebook, but uh, there was an individual that was jailed over that uh, shooting that got a, a bail of $2,000. How is that bail, is that, does he have to come up with $2,000 cash or? It depends on the judge. It depends on the conditions. Sometimes they have to put it forward. Sometimes it's just they don't have to until they reach. Then the money has to come up afterwards. So he's released yep. on bail and he goes and commits another offense immediately, basically. <laughs> and, and he's breached. Then the bail is increased by 500. It's up to the judge. We don't control that. It's up to the courts. So. I guess my concern is that uh, just how this looks to the public and uh, I'm wondering if there's any way that we can um, address it as a council or um, you know have some influence or have some input or or something I mean is there somebody that uh, the mayor could talk to <laughs> about that. Yeah, I know a guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how, how receptive they would be, but I would suggest Crown might be an avenue you can discuss that with. You know, maybe At the end of the day, they make the submissions to. Maybe the on a right? on a note like that, maybe it's uh, appropriate we write to the Attorney General of British yeah. Columbia as well as uh, our MP Bob Zimmer and say, you know, it's a concern for us when we see this type of uh, situation occur in our community, right? Well, I know. In forestry, uh, we had some issues and we wrote a letter to the chief judge, I believe, in Victoria or wherever he was, and, and we did get some, mm. some results out of that. But, you know, I'm just thinking this year, I mean, to the average person, 
it, it doesn't sound like it's uh, good policy. Well, we had eight arrests on that investigation, and three have been released in the community. Yeah. And one was released, was out maybe for two hours, and he was back in custody. You know, I guess to the community, to the city of Dawson Creek, um, you know, if this continues, do we just keep adding more policemen? You know, I mean, try and uh, go get more policemen than there is criminals, or <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's the cost, there, there is an impact, a cost impact. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's a, uh, it's a, our, our uh, workload, um, our staffing is based on files and the amount of work that is generated absolutely impacts the resourcing that the uh, staff is uh, going to have to deal with at some point coming to us as a component to it. So, you know, it's a good point and I'll follow it up on the bail conditions and see if I can get something from MLA Bernier through the Attorney General and also through to Mike Bernier and see if there's uh, what we can understand through that and if we can write some letters to support it. Any further questions for Staff Sergeant? So great job, honestly, to the guys and all the folks involved in that. That was a significant event in our community when you see somebody abducted and shot and within days there was an arrest being made and I think the public, certainly from that I heard, were really appreciative of the work that the uh, members were doing in regards to public safety for our community. So hope you'll pass that on to them. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, item 15-4, we have a report from the Director of Corporate Administration. Good morning. Good morning. I don't really have anything to pull out of the document unless anybody has any questions. I just want to comment that uh, we do have new admin staff and they are being trained uh, very quickly and learning very quickly and we're really excited about the progress made. But. Uh, there will be a bit of time before we get all up to speed and back on track with our priorities. Thank you, Brenda. Any questions? I just want to send, you know what, honestly, since uh, we did finally over the last three or four months, uh, as it's been since we're back up staff, I certainly from the support that I see upstairs here now and the work that uh, Kelsey you now and uh, uh, Angela and Sabrina have done it's just been uh, really amazing support and how quickly they've locked into the role and a credit to you guys and they're doing a great job. 15-5 uh, we have a report from the Chief Financial Officer. Good morning. Good morning. So there's not much in my report it, it talks about budget and the audit and it makes it look really simple but they're both really really big um, projects so um, we're making headway on both. I'd like to thank council and senior staff for coming out to the budget consultation last week that you missed because you were sick, your worship. But it went well. Um, we're still struggling with um, attendance. Um, there was 23 people that came to have a, a word with their council. Um, you know, there's two things to uh, public consultation. One, putting out the information educating and making them aware but really it's about uh, the residents of the community having the chance to talk to their uh, council about the issues of the day and of course there was that with the memorial arena issue coming up a, a few times so um, that's good it's one step in the process and we're going to have another uh, public consultation at the end of April when we present the five years so that's going along um, um, step by step and the information is getting put together on the five-year plus the changes as we roll forward. Um, the year-end audit is also going uh, smoothly. We had a, um, a follow-up meeting with the auditor on Friday and um, we're just going through the process and we're still on target for dates. So those are the two main things in finance. Um, like Brenda, our department is also training uh, two new employees. Um, Eric uh, Hong, a uh, business administration student from Vancouver. Um, really excited to get him on track for the capital asset management um, position and moving forward with that plan. And um, 
also Selma Schreiber from Tumblr Ridge who is uh, taking over the maternity leave for Frances Singer and we're trying to get her up to uh, speed really quick because it's a year's position and there's lots to do with the budget and and uh, everything is moving really fast so yeah we just welcome both of those new employees and uh, yeah that's about it from me thanks Shelley any, any questions, questions? Councillor Parzal just a comment and then a, a question again I just wanted to say I really appreciated your presentation at the budget meeting I thought it was very professional as was your demeanor throughout the meeting it's a shame we don't have more thank you and I know you and I chatted briefly the other day uh, we we need to address uh, somehow <laughs> what can we do I mean the staff goes to a lot of work and as I said, consistently presents a very pro professional presentation. So that's a challenge, um, and, and no criticism <laughs> at all. It's None just taken. a challenge. Um, and I guess this is a more general question, and maybe this uh, staff can answer this. Uh, I read the NDP critic for municipal affairs release. So the question is, uh, have you got any news on the municipal, again, the title of the person, I may not have completely, but the person, the, the gr group that the government set up to audit municipal affairs, have we had any dialogue <laughs> recently uh, from them, or what's the status of it? I'm going to turn this over to Jim because okay. he's the point man on yeah, this. Sure. Uh, so we understand <coughs> that uh, we are not in the next announced uh, round of audits to be released. We understand that Seashelt and Delta, I believe, could be Langley, I can't remember actually. One, uh, Seashelt and someone else are the next to be released, and those uh, audits are to be publicly released, if not this month, then early in April. Uh, so that means they've already gone through the process known as fact-checking. So when your draft audit is uh, ready, it's sent to the gover local government for a review to make sure that uh, there's an agreement on the facts that are presented. Uh, so we would anticipate, we've been told, that we should get our um, document for that process uh, April or May-ish in order for a release uh, uh, of our audit audits uh, in uh, late fall or late spring, early summer. Uh, but uh, as you would have seen in the media reports, that office is having some difficulty meeting their timelines, so um, I guess we, we'll know it's here when it's here. Just yep, go ahead. So if we did it in the fall, that would be a year and some months since they were here doing that? Almost work? two years. They were here when I started. Almost two years. It's the fall of 2013. Yeah. That's correct. We're, yeah. we're approaching two years since the yeah. original mm -hmm. contact. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions for Shelley? Councillor Javeka? <coughs> um, <coughs> in, in the budget meeting there that we had at the old post office, <coughs> there were some concerns brought up. So I'm just wondering what the process is now with those concerns, if there is any process. I know there's only one individual brought them up, uh, but one was the bus service. Um, another one was the uh, QP guards versus commissioners for the uh, jail. Um, so those two issues, you know, the guy came to the meeting and brought them up. So what's the follow-up there, or uh, will there be any follow-up? Yep, through your worship. So uh, the gentleman had a few more. He was talking about tax rates as well. So basically what happens after the first consultation is the information is compiled, and then a response is given at the next public consultation. Um, I know some of the specifics on the arena were answered right away. This gentleman's uh, questions were not answered. Um, at that session, but something will be compiled and it will be uh, delivered by the mayor, um, hopefully at the next uh, public With consultation. With council approval. <coughs> Absolutely. Proposed responses yeah. are brought to council for a vote, basically. Good. Thank you. Councillor Rogers? Okay. Um, also at the meeting, um, I know people were talking about, um, one, one gentleman had said 
Do we have money set aside for the repairs to the arena and the curling ring? And the answer that he was given, which is in the capital, 2015 capital budget, of the assessment and everything else. So let's just say, because with the Hockeyville stuff and everything else that's going on, and um, we do get a report that comes back that says um, it's going to cost three or four million dollars to do the repairs to the arena. Where is that money going to come from? Because I, I think that that was the question that they were asking. Um, and I'm, I'm curious of my, myself now is where where's the city, where's the corporation going to come up with three or four million dollars to do the repairs on the arena if it's not in the 2015 capital budget? so so to me the um, approach that's going to take place is that the reports that come back to council in terms of uh, the two sides of it the survey that was done by the Brian um, Johnson uh, in terms of future use and all that data and then the integrity stuff around the facilities will come back to us through administration at that point we'll have some further uh, information that will get help us guide uh, in terms of okay what are the issues what are the uh, demands of doing repairs to that facility what are the anticipated costs and is council one going to make the move that we're going to do those repairs and or not and if we are going to do the repairs and they're two million or three million dollars then we need to go into the capital budget and say here's the projects here's the money of the availability of revenue we have within the capital budget for our capital projects and here's what's not going to get done in order to do that project if that's what we choose to do so jim uh so the current resolution of council says you will <coughs> invest some money in the kin arena to extend its lifespan and um, an amount was put to that it says you will invest up to an amount for the curling rink if that would work to get the curling rink operating uh, for the 2015-16 ice season on the basis there is no alternative for the curling rink. But your motion also says you will not be operating the Memorial Arena in 2015-16 ice season, that you will be relocating the uses to the Encant Event Centre. That's the current mo motions of Council, all to be uh, adjusted as necessary once you have the full picture. But for the moment there is actually enough. My direction from Council is the reverse. We will not be operating the Memorial in 2015-16 ice season. That's the current direction. Yeah, I think once that information comes back to us, then we'll have a couple of uh, decisions to make. One uh, is that uh, amount of money now that now that we've determined what the cause and what the damages are and repairs that are necessary are going to cost us, and are we going to do it? Um, but it's still too early to be able to enter into <coughs> either one of them because we don't know one what the damage or the extent of repairs that are going to be necessary and. Two, if council are going to reallocate uh, the funds from some other source, from some other capital project, to that uh, particular one, if it's determined to be a priority for the community. So we're going to defer money from the capital budget to finance it. No, I didn't say that. No. Uh, I said okay. first step is you got to well. We're going to look at it, and then that's our option. That's an option. Sure. Your Worship, I, I, I'm just going to make a comment based on budget process only. So, okay. apart from what council direction is currently, when these these um, projects come about and they're delayed after the budget process, we have to wait for the council decision at the point in time. Once that council decision is made, then a number of options are put forward. Whether it's going to be reallocating dollars, deferring it to a future year, not going through with it, increasing a fee, borrowing. There's lots of financing options that are looked at, but you still have to wait for the decision point. So that's where we are right now. So carts ahead of the horse again. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. She did Can't make a decision to spend no, until me. we know whether <laughs> I got we're going to be spending. The horse. <laughs> <laughs> Just me. Thank you. Further questions for Shelley? So thanks very much. I apologize for uh, not being able to be there the other night, and I really appreciate Councillor Schumann stepping up and chairing the meeting, and Council for being there. And uh, thank you. Uh, item 15.6. We have a report from the Director of Infrastructure. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> so this morning, I just wanted to briefly touch on our spring cleaning, seeing as how we have a beautiful spring day out there. Uh, we're shifting gears hopefully now from snow plowing and removal to cleanup. So we currently do have sweepers working and picking up rock throughout the town. 
we will be starting boulevard cleaning. Under policy, we have 33 properties that we do go and remove rock from on boulevards as well as our own boulevards. <coughs> and then we will start into uh, the repair of winter damage, whether it be uh, tore up lawn from graders, sometimes fences pushed, uh, landscaping, etc. Uh, we also compile a list of seniors who have rocks removed from their yards through uh, nonprofit groups. We've already started the compilation of that list downstairs in utilities through Kale. Uh, and then once we've completed that process, we actually uh, screen the sweepings and reuse them. So we will be going out to proposals shortly to see who will be the successful candidate to screen those sweepings. Uh, we use those that material um, in a number of different projects, whether it be uh, underground or, or even in lanes. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention today is because of the amendment of our reclaimed water use permit last September. We are gearing up to use our reclaimed water, um, which is unrestricted access under permit for city operations for this year. We will be looking at using it for sewer main flushing, street sweeping, possibly some irrigation uh, or watering, and uh, dust control. So we're in the process right now of uh, putting that program together, uh, getting our equipment rigged up to be able to fill over at our our reclaim fill station and uh, so we're looking forward to utilizing that this year. Uh, one final note I guess I should say I know there's some questions around Loran earlier. Uh, today and tomorrow we are in the commissioning process up there. Hope to have that uh, reservoir up and operating here by the end of the week and uh, we look forward to having it online. Good deal. Thanks Sean. Any questions? Councillor Parslow? Yeah I, I don't expect staff to do, do any research these questions but just it, they're just questions of interest and if the information is readily handy, fine. Um, how, have you got any estimates of how much uh, reclaimed water we might be uh, using for these projects, in other words, or how much we're saving from our potable water system? Um, it, it's hard to say. We used about 30,000 cubes of, uh, of potable water uh, last year, and we're not going to be able to, to, be able to utilize uh, an entire reclaim program, but we're hoping that we can hit around that 50% mark, so hopefully yeah. around 15,000 cubes. It would just be interesting. I think it's a significant step forward for the yeah. city in being able to do this. Uh, the same sort of question. You know what, Councillor Barzo, I'm just thinking of the numbers I just told you. It might be incorrect, but I'm going to get you those numbers and bring them back to you. Well, I don't want you to go too much work. It's just a matter of, I think it's a good news thing to, uh, <laughs> because many people have talked about that. Uh, what potential use, why aren't we, and now we are able to, it has nothing to do with the city not wanting to do it. The other same sort of question would be with the, the, the you know, you, we pick up all this <coughs> grit and stuff and you, we repurpose it. Mm -hmm. Do I have any, what ratio is it, uh, are, we, we well, are we able to reuse 25, 50% of it? When you say you pick up grit, that's exactly what you do. Grit, garbage, and the rock that we initially put down. Yeah. So there is a, a quite a, an amount of material or dirt that comes back with the material. Our, our uh, wash rock tender for Public Works for Sanding for the year is based on 2,500 cubic meters. Um, on average, we pick up just over 3,000 cubic meters, but that does include a lot of other yeah. dirt and material as well. Um, to put a number in regards to cost, um, <laughs> When we, when we reclaim the product, if you were to put a dollar value on it, um, we probably spend around $20,000 to get $40,000 worth of material Yeah. Good. for reuse. Great. Thank you. Further questions? So, and I, I just want to extend, uh, obviously, over the last week or 10 days, the amount of, uh, I've had a few calls about people with steaming issues and flooding and culverts and things. and. And so I really appreciate the efforts. Obviously, the guys are out there doing a great job and have responded very quickly on each and every one of them. So just appreciate that on behalf of the public uh, I've heard from on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Uh, item 15-7, report from the Director of Community Services. Good morning, Barry. Good morning. Uh, Your Worship, I think you were at the um, banquet that I emceed the other night that I mentioned uh, welcoming the other seven communities to our 
part of the piece, how beautiful it was. And uh, Sean, I don't want to curse you, but as soon as you start Boulevard uh, cleanup, I walked out of that uh, banquet and the wind was going sideways and the snow was flying. So uh, there may still be a few white days left to put down that gravel you pick up. So hopefully we're okay. A number of items uh, today within the uh, report, uh, but wanted to spend most of our time uh, rolling out a, a very good news uh, item. And I've asked Veronica, president of the union, to attend with me. Uh, as well to roll that out as a as part of our working relationship with the union and uh, meeting our obligations under uh, our union contract so I'll, I'll uh, sort of defer that there are some really good items uh, within the report but I think some some very uh, challenging times ahead uh, specifically how we're addressing our safety within our our workplace uh, some of the numbers have, have increased and um, if there are specific or follow-up questions to that, Duncan and myself can can provide additional information to Council on that. Um, but we have uh, looked and the committees have re uh, retwigged and there's some significant work looking at education and our work practices every day. Uh, working as our, uh, very closely with our unionized and our management staff to ensure that our staff are safe. Um, but there are some statistical uh, direct st uh, statistical relationships that that we need to uh, start to focus in on, and um, those are anything as an aging workforce um, to uh, reminding ourselves every day uh, that safety should be number one. So if there's anything specific to that side, uh, Duncan will will help me out with that as he works directly with the safety committees and their councils. Um, a lot of uh, really good news around the Ken Bork Aquatic Center and a. Duncan and that staff have worked very hard uh, re retooling and looking at a lot of different ways to make it uh, cost efficient and, and energy efficient. And um, I tell you, I've talked to a lot of facilities across the Northeast and the number uh, one factor that, that we're all battling is uh, recruitment and retention of staff. I just uh, was speaking with um, an individual who said, Great facility, beautiful, uh, lots of features, but can't get staff. And I think that's that's been a recurring. And I, for the second time around, uh, Duncan and the, that staff, and uh, through Veronica and her staff, I want to thank you for the lab program uh, nearing its second completion. And and we're we're starting to get some very qualified people, as well. Duncan has looked at, at every angle of saving and making it more efficient uh, contractual agreements with making it attractive to, to come and work for us and stay, as opposed to trying to recruit a number of uh, more than qualified staff, but only being able to offer them part-time work. And uh, sooner or later, that only stays for a little while and, and they move on or they, they get different jobs. So uh, there's lots of uh, things we could talk about there as well. Uh, and it's interesting statistical data, and I think as we move forward, uh, whether we're opening, extending, but we're collecting all the data and um, those are pretty amazing statistical data around the walking track this month or the past month. A lot of people taking advantage of the fact that we've opened uh, in relationship with the with the arena opening uh, and kind of running as a uh, a second arena pad. A lot of activities happening. Uh, the Totem Figure Skating Championships was a huge success, uh, and we're <coughs> currently looking at and and hosting the Midget Tier Three Provincial Championships. Uh, kudos to the volunteers that put that together. Those are all volunteers uh, driven through our community. Uh, step to the plate uh, for council to know uh, that was supposed to go to Whitehorse and uh, Whitehorse pulled their bid uh, at a very tough time for anyone within BC to pick that up. And uh, this group of volunteers here did a, a spectacular job. Uh, the dinner the other night was, was very uh, awesome. Uh, and I think they're on a good track. Uh, we were able to secure a, a really uh, high-end um, hockey official at Hockey Canada came in and really the only charge he, he put out was, was some meal ticket and uh, that was pretty impressive and, and Paul Carson, uh, it's interesting in the world of, of sport or anything we do in volunteerism across this country, uh, he was closely linked to the coach from Coquitlam who had worked uh, five high performance events for Paul down in the lower mainland, uh, worked very closely with Mike Landucci who's the referee in chief here but more so was, uh, I think, the worship uh, 20, I won't say the year-ish, but uh, Paul and uh, the worship worked very closely in development of all uh, BC amateur uh, development of our coach clinics and our performance programs here. So <laughs> I think it was pretty uh, neat that Paul had that opportunity to rekindle and he took the opportunity to speak at Hockeyville and did a great uh, le uh, speech at, um, on leadership to these 15, 16, 17-year-old uh, 
uh, hockey players this month or that are participating in the championships. Uh, if there's uh, any specific questions to the report, I can address that now. Um, and then I'll ask Veronica to join me. Just any questions? Paul, Councillor Jovekov? Uh, <coughs> you mentioned in there the safety department. Is there a formal safety department that uh, works on behalf of the staff? No. Uh, it's, that's driven by the, um, uh, maybe Duncan could help me. It's something that that I look at uh, look after off the side of my desk. Uh, WorkSafe last year came in and recommended or required that we break the city uh, safety committees up into smaller pods. So we have uh, five safety committees across the community. I run a steering committee, and we also use uh, a consultant to develop policy and audit individual components of our program. Uh, a couple times a year, they come up. And uh, generally, it's driven through the departments and it's driven through the managers of those departments um, and our policy. The reason I'm asking is because I remember when we uh, <coughs> we had an issue with uh, WCB rates years ago, and uh, I think Jim hired somebody to deal with specifically with WCB and safety. And by the chart there, you can see the rate went down up until uh, 2009 and then it started increasing and uh, you know an increase of uh, 80 cents a thousand adds up eh? yes so yes, it does. I, I don't know if the system has changed or it's just a, <coughs> a result of uh, you know something that's uh, they haven't got much control of. I don't know. <coughs> okay, Jim? just before. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, through your worship, uh, that is a good question. Whether which elements in a safety program uh, you're going to see concrete results from, and which you know, which kind of things will happen that are out of your control. Um, generally, um, uh, best practice is to have dedicated. Uh, HR people and dedicated safety people we have neither <coughs> and so uh, our results are a little more random than some other people are getting and uh, it does appear now that we're on an upward trend thank you if I'm correct Duncan as well as is, is one or two significant injuries certainly drive those numbers up in the yeah, workforce ourselves. Ourselves. In a workforce ourselves, so. look at that second uh, page there in the, the chart that that year of 103 is generally driven by one one incident of approximately $70,000 and you know it uh, they're accidents they're not planned for and, and we've done a lot of work to ensure that uh, you know that there's policies and procedures and we work with our staff to ensure that doesn't happen but I can tell you again in 2015 that there's an accident uh, January and February and I mean they're not uh, these people are returning to work and, and uh, you know but they're, they're significant accidents that we have to, to to try and mitigate as we move forward right Thank you. And just before Veronica comes up uh, under the efficiency side of what we're trying to look at a uh, number of programs that we may have in the past have delivered as a community service department or looking at uh, individual things like events of stat holidays and the cost of those uh, we're pulling all those data together to look at the the key stat days at the pool we should be open and maybe where there's some cost efficiencies that, uh, that they don't merit uh, opening uh, there are certain holidays that uh, you could probably uh, shoot a cannon off in Dawson that everyone's run away and gone to uh, a different place. So we'll, we'll uh, bring those forward as well as another one would be the Terry Fox run. Uh, our staff has compiled a report that I want to bring forward. Last year we had agreed to as a community service department as volunteers. Uh, we had a lot of staff engaged in that final uh, week, but it, it's getting very difficult for our staff to find volunteers. Uh, even the collection of the money through the credit union has changed. And uh, we're only one of two communities in this region now that still uh, run it as a city, and most are run through the school program. So we'll bring that forward as well. Okay, Veronica, please. Thanks, Barry. Okay, before we show the quick video, uh, we've been tasked uh, with this through our, our unionized contract. Um, again, in the, the last several years since the, this became part of my, um, on my portfolio, uh, we've worked very closely with the union. Uh, 
and I think Veronica would attest to uh, with me being by my side today this is a really good news item from both the unions perspective and the city uh, basically respect in the workplace has been developed to provide organizations of our size in all industry with the standard tool for employees to combat bullying abuse harassment discrimination and our educational tools that we're looking for within this project to is improve our organizational culture create confidence in dealing in difficult situations articulate standards and expectations for everyone in our workplace empower employees to pro uh, react positively as bystanders and promote and build psychological safe workplaces a couple of stats I just wanted to reveal to you is that research confirms that over 40% of all Canadians have experienced bullying abuse harassment or discrimination in their workplaces 82% of targets feel that they are the ones that have to leave their jobs over the next 30 years if un unaddressed the impact of mental health problems on lost productivity due to absenteeism turnover will cost Canadian business 198 billion dollars Mental health is probably the biggest issue that we deal with on a basis with our union. Um, a recent study showed that 516 participants who experienced bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination in the workplace showed that 73% were treated for work-related health symptoms and 49 were, were diagnosed with depression. Um, I take my hats off to Jim and direction that we had to, to bring this forward to council. Uh, we worked with Respect a Group out of Calgary um, and put this together uh, this package will roll out um, it actually has rolled out we've done some tests with our, our uh, arena staff and very positive results I want to uh, let you know as well in, in BC uh, an amendment was recently made to the Workers Compensation Act to specifically address uh, this challenge uh, through the new act workplace bullying and harassment it's acknowledged as a work related stressor and thus for now is compensation compensationable um, so we must do our homework make sure we're working together and and try and reset the clock or the culture uh, BC has also introduced the legally binding workplace policies that define bullying harassment and oblige employers supervisors and workers to take the steps forward to prevent it I believe this is the first huge step forward uh, we have done a lot of work together um, but I can tell you that this may be the, the most uh, cost-effective and, and biggest step forward uh, because we're a member of the BC Chamber of Commerce uh, this will be offered through our staff for $30 a staff member uh, and is licensed and certified for a three-year training module so we're basically investing $10 per staff member for the next three years up to a maximum of 200 uh, so this whole package rolls out for uh, uh, about six thousand dollars it's been messaged through and packaged up in a sellable uh, it's got our Dawson Creek logo uh, within it uh, pictures of our staff and uh, we're going to present today a very brief message that uh, it's delivered by mayor um, and it sets the tone for that uh, I, I would say that we've learned through some very difficult challenges that as this new legislation rolled out uh, tire myself Duncan uh, working with uh, Molina and uh, our stop sh shop stewards and through president uh, Veronica that this is is very critical uh, when we get engaged and and uh, not understanding what we're doing uh, bringing in a third party uh, individual and and there's no choice when it gets to that third party uh, you can quickly spend twenty five thousand dollars so we need to set the bar understand where the language is uh, work with our staff members and work with our union to become a very successful uh, place to be and place to work. So I just wanted to quickly show you the introduction uh, and then I'll explain uh, quickly how it'll work. workplace environment. Hello and welcome to Respect in the Workplace, a program crafted to ensure our organization is a respectful workplace free of discrimination, bullying, and harassment, not only for city personnel, but for business owners and the citizens of Dawson Creek as well. Respect in the Workplace is a program to help make yourself and your colleagues aware of your own behaviors and those behaviors of the people you work with and around. 
you may very well find you witnessed some of the inappropriate behaviors described in this program previously. But at the time, didn't realize how unsettling the situation was for the recipient of the bad behavior, or even to you as a witness to it. With respect in the workplace, the aim is to provide information about inappropriate behaviors and what to do when you see them take place. All employees at any organization should have one common goal, a healthy, energetic, and productive workplace. We're all more proficient at our jobs when we feel valued, not only by the corporation as a whole, but also by our colleagues and co-workers. We all succeed when our organization succeeds, and the organization succeeds when we're at our best. Every workplace should be a place where you are happy to come to work each day, a place where you can be proud of the work you do, and a place you can be proud to say you were a part of. Finally, your workplace should be a place where discrimination, bullying, and harassment do not exist. Before you begin the program, let us leave you with this final thought. You get out of this only what you put into it, so please give it your focused attention. Only together can we create the best possible work environments for ourselves and our organization. That message uh, basically starts off 90 minutes of training. Um, the beauty which we felt as a committee uh, was that it's some of the best educational practices uh, where an individual, uh, this will be rolled out to all staff, uh, union and management, and I uh, would highly encourage if, if council decided to have a look at it, we'll provide those passes. Um, you can start the program, you can, ha you can take it home, the URL, URL will allow you to go on your own computer, you basically log in for your privacy and your own ability, the individual why it's not group is that um, there are certain parts that may uh, twig uh, emotion, uh, may create open uh, thoughts from the past uh, or trying to currently deal with the current situation. Uh, all research shows us that providing the individual through that process is most effective. Uh, as I said, five members of our uh, arena staff have already completed it, as well as Shantae, and reports back are very positive. There is a pre-survey that collects data on where we currently are. It's a very, um, uh, gives us as a group some, some base background, and then there's a survey at the end as well uh, to see where we need to continue to focus and work. Uh, the beauty of, of this as well is it provides all of our forms, our, our union contract wording, uh, provides investigation uh, templates to start if we have an individual process where someone feels uh, they need to bring forward to our committee. Uh, it has everything that we need and it's probably uh, one of the best uh, templates that we've looked at and we have searched a lot of them. A any questions from Councillor Veronica, do you have anything? No. Um, this really is a great opportunity between the city and the local 2403 to roll out this program. We hear more and more daily of bullying and harassment, not of just adults, but teens. We see it on the media. We have people that don't realize what they say or what they do on how that affects somebody and takes it home. And hopefully this will just bring that back home to our workers and our other employees. Thank Any you. Questions? Thank you. Any questions? Great job, you guys. Thank you. Veronica, thanks for coming in Thank this you. morning. I appreciate it. Barry, thank you. 15-8, we have a report from the Director of Development Services. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. <coughs> I'll make this uh, fairly brief as we are uh, into the lunch hour already. A um, couple things to touch on. Uh, you'll see in the report. Um, each department kind of busy getting ready for uh, spring activities. We're starting to see uh, more potential development come through the door. Although um, you look at the, the building stats, we are uh, quite a bit behind last year at this time. But again, winter construction, there's a number of things that, uh, that could be affecting that. What I can tell you is there's been a lot of, a lot of people coming through that maybe haven't issued building permits as of yet, but uh, potential projects, uh, much like you saw this morning on council. There's a number of development permits uh, that wouldn't be recorded in here. So we'll see where that goes. It, it certainly hasn't slowed down in our, in our department. Um, engineering, we are, again, it's that time of year. We're getting a lot of our RFPs, tenders, and things together. We'll be hopefully putting out uh, paving tenders fairly soon. We'll be putting out uh, RFPs for uh, 
pavement condition assessments and uh, also the 10th Street Bridge condition assessments. So a number of things uh, happening as we get into spring. And uh, probably the last thing I want to touch on and, and uh, most importantly is uh, we have hired a new planner, um, Nigel Whitehead. Uh, he was up probably the better part of three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, and he's from the Williams Lake area and he'll be starting on the 30th of March. So excited to have him come on board. That's going to be great assistance for us. And um, yeah, so any questions? Thanks, Kevin. Any questions? Yeah, great news, right? Yeah. See, uh, we got a planner uh, starting on staff and uh, it's been a vacancy that we've been chugging along with a long time. So gr uh, great job. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Javekov. Uh, just to follow up to a question that I had, uh, I think at the last call meeting, mm -hmm. on uh, business licenses, if they're available on the website or if that's uh, possible. I think that was. Uh, yeah, we were going to actually. I think we were going to talk to uh, because of, of the freedom of information aspect of it. Yeah. My apologies that I missed out on that. I will look into it and get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions for Kevin? Kevin, thank you. Yes, thank you. Good job. And that uh, then gets us to recess to our closed. Where are you going to make a motion here about getting a strategic oh, right. report Sorry. forward by staff? My my the apologies. Fiscal gap is your number so we'll go back to uh, make that motion that uh, we instruct Jim to bring forward a plan uh, with the uh, fiscal gap identified as a priority and setting some dates for us to uh, begin that uh, conversation and interaction. So I'll make that Councillor Parslow seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Councillor Javeka? So that was passed, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> just a question. <laughs> just a question on uh, this notion of dealing with or trying to have some effect, I guess, on this uh, deal where they're releasing these prisoners, and then uh, you know, right. I, I mean, it just seems like such a open door policy. <laughs> it, 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 should we make a motion that we? deal with it formally or or how should we do it here absolutely if you want to uh, uh, council's will is to uh, instruct us I would be happy to take that on well, as like to, in I'll terms make of a motion that we do something formal and uh, I can discuss it if we got a seconder sure Second. okay um, what I did when I was with forestry is I went and talked to um, it was Gord Schmidt at that time that ran the courthouse and he gave me a name of uh, the chief justice I think the head the head guy for judges in BC and uh, so he was the one that I wrote a letter to about an issue and um, you know we did get results so yeah. I don't know if it'll have an impact but at least it'll bring the issue to their attention sure and I'd be happy to do that in terms of take that on as council's priority if you see that as a initiative that get to MLA Bernier through to the Attorney General also through to Mike uh, MP uh, Zimmer uh, federally and say look we've had this situation it's a concern for our community we want to see if there's some way to address the issue of releasing these guys back into our community uh, when uh, bail is absolutely a, uh, not being an uh, effective tool in uh, keeping them off our streets. That work? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, any, any further questions, comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Was that all? Resume, resume and move to closed? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Councillor uh, McFadden? We're moving to close. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Usually. Yep. I'll second. Thank you. You're welcome.